here's the strategy. And, and I, the, you bring this up, Adam, how challenging a conversation is as a trainer. Someone's willing to pay me a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars to train them for a month or two months or three months or whatever, and they're like, I, you know, my, I just need to lose fifty pounds. And I'm like, okay, how am I going to tell this person? I, I don't. We're not going to lose any weight for the first three months. Yeah. So the way I would say it, and this is what I'm going to say to people listening right now, is if your number one goal is to lose weight for the first three months, your goal should be to get stronger. That's it. Yeah. Your goal for the first three months is <coughs> I'm going to go to the gym. And my goal is to get strong in the gym. My goal is to feel stable, to, to get good exercise technique, to get stronger in core lifts, squats and deadlifts and presses and rows. And part of the process of getting stronger is to make sure I feed myself enough so that it can fuel that strength. After three months, if you've gotten significantly stronger, if you can see that you're lifting more weight and you feel tighter and, you and, you're, and you're, again, you're stronger, now start to cut. You'll be way more successful. Now that's very generic, okay? Because it can be different from person to person. But that piece of advice right there is going to serve people far better than the traditional, uh, oh, you want to lose weight, cut your calories and go do a bunch of cardiovascular activity. For the first three months, just get strong. I Trust me, it will set you up far better than anything else uh, you've done in the past. Hey, real quick, here's the giveaway for today's episode. MAPS Performance, free to one of you listeners. Just do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you. You'll get free access to MAPS Performance. Also, we're running a new sale because it's a new month. Check this one out. MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, MAPS Anywhere. Three programs, a brand new bundle. that They would retail if you got them all on their own for $361. But right now, you can get all three for $99.99, one payment, and it gives you access to all three programs for life. So if you want to try it out, you want to sign up, you just want to learn more, go to mapsapril.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. If you want to lose weight, one of the first things a lot of you should do is actually increase your calories. Ooh, yeah, I, know. How I does like that this. work. I Sounds like so opposite. I like this tip and all the, you know, uh, law thermics nerds are gonna heads are gonna explode yeah. right now. So think of it this way, right? Because it took me a little while to figure this out. What's funny too is the the three of us trained on our own, trained lots of clients. We all came to the same conclusion. You would get a client. Most people want to lose weight, uh, so you get a client. They want to lose a lot of weight, and you have two options: one, get them to lose some weight now, hit a hard plateau because the metabolism adapts. Mm -hmm. Oh crap, we're in this really kind of bad position, or create some runway, give them some space where we can cut from in the near future. And part of that process is slowly increasing calories, simultaneously also employing some strength training. Because if you start to build muscle, or at the very least, if you tell the body to build muscle and it moves and trends in that direction, the metabolism adapts in a way that's beneficial. It speeds up and it's way easier to lose weight when you have a faster metabolism than it is when you have a slower metabolism. Well, you first have to you have to break down for the audience. What signal are you sending to the body when you when you decide to take calories, restrict calories yeah. from it, and all of a sudden increase activity? And a lot of times that's cardio and weight training all at once because you weren't doing anything before. You are now motivated, whether it be from the doctor yeah. or a wedding coming up or a birthday or a New Year's resolution, and now you've decided, I'm going to make a, a change, a new way of life, and I know that I'm supposed to you know, stop eating these bad foods, yeah. so you restrict, and then you all of a sudden say, I'm going to get after it. So you got to explain why why that is such a bad strategy um, the, well, to get it's, started. It's, this is what makes weight loss so hard is that your your metabolism adapts and, and the signals that it receives tells your body in which direction the metabolism should adapt. So if you're eating, let's say you're eating 2,000 calories a day and you cut it all the way down to 1,200, plus you start to do lots of cardio where you're burning lots of calories – initially there's a calorie deficit. You're eating 1,200, your body's burning more calories than it was before, you're going to lose some weight. But then what the body does is it adapts its metabolism so that that 1,200 calories you're taking in is enough to sustain you. And by the way, okay, it, it, this may sound crazy, except for almost everybody watching this has experienced this. You, knew, you lose that initial 10 pounds, you hit a hard plateau, and then you're in this position where you're like, do I cut even yeah, more calories? 
Do I work out even more? Like I'm already eating not that much, but let's just say you're one of those really crazy motivated individuals and you're like, I'm going to cut even more. I'm going to work out even more. Eventually you're in this position where maybe you do hit your goal, but you're eating very low calories. You're working out every single day, very hard to sustain. Now on the flip side, what we can do is we could tell the metabolism to adapt in the opposite direction by building some muscle. And in order to build muscle, you have to fuel the body a little bit. So you feed the body, you build some muscle and you give yourself runway. So now after maybe a few months, let's say I get my metabolism up to 2,800 calories a day. Well, now I can cut from there. I have way more room to go. And then where I end up is I'm eating. And this, I used to do this all the time. Clients would lose 20 or 30 pounds and actually end up eating more at the end of that weight loss journey right. than they did when they walked into it. Now we have sustainability. Otherwise it's so hard. This is the whole delayed versus immediate gratification totally. strategy. And it's all psychological and it's, you know, really important for coaches to graduate uh, to the to the place where they can recommend uh, the right path for their clients instead of just providing them with what they're coming in and, and uh, uh, expecting and, yeah. and, you know, prescribing something that's really going to have long-term success. And this is the way to do it and to get the body healthier, to uh, stretch the capacity for them to eat in a really comfortable, if not more than comfortable place. So then we can start, uh, you know, scaling it down to uh, cut and, and define uh, the physique a bit more from that. Direction. I think this is a this is a really challenging conversation for young coaches and you know trainers when you first get started. To explain. first of all, I think the the first part of my career, I didn't even piece this together or fully fully. No, I did the it. wrong thing. Yeah, yep. I mean, I, I come from the camp of like thought, law thermodynamics is all that matters, and that you know if they're if they're eating X, we need to subtract something out of that, and that's the best strategy to get them to that's lose That's because weight. we don't consider that the your metabolism adapts, right? Because right. that would make sense if it didn't adapt, right. yeah. but it does, and then you're screwed. Where yeah. are you at? Yeah, and so I think that that you when you're when you're piecing this together, and then you you add in the fact that w what a hard conversation that is to the the client who comes in. They sit across from you the desk desk, and they tell you, "I need to lose fifty or a hundred pounds." Mm -hmm. And imagine, you know, being that young trainer and you are trying to communicate to them that, okay, well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add food to your diet, yeah. you know, just how hard that is for them to receive that. And then how hard that is as a coach to like navigate through that conversation on explaining why we want to do this mm -hmm. uh, in the long run. But I tell you, uh, when I finally pieced this all together, I made a, a world of difference on on helping my clients that needed to lose weight for long term, right? Like I can take anybody and starve them or restrict dramatic amount of calories and tell them to burn, 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 move, yep. move, move to get them to lose 10, 15, 20 pounds or whatever. But the sustainability of that is is crazy. Like to, because of the point you made, like if someone's already at pretty low calories and not moving very much and I take them and I start moving them like crazy and restricting, even if they do see uh, the initial results, eventually they're going to hit a hard wall. And then you look at yourself and you're like, I'm not even halfway to my goal of losing a hundred pounds or whatever I want to. And I'm only eating this much. I'm training uh, this many days a week. I'm exhausted. I think I was happier, fatter. Look at the studies on yeah. the biggest loser, the biggest loser of the TV show where they take these really obese, uh, individuals who are super motivated. Obviously they're on a TV show. They beat the crap out of them. They restrict their calories and the goal is to see who can lose the most weight. And then the biggest loser wins the competition. The follow-up with these people is insane. You're talking about individuals who, after the show, gained weight on anything over 1,100 or 1,200 calories a day. And many of them were trying to keep up these crazy workout routines, which are just not sustainable. I mean, look, here's the truth. If we took 100 regular people off the streets and I asked them, raise your hand if you've ever lost... 15 pounds, I bet you 90 plus of them would raise your hand. Now, if I said, how many of you lost 20 pounds and kept it off for over five years, you'd see one, right? Yeah. That's the challenge. The challenge isn't losing the weight. The challenge is how do I set myself up so that the weight stays off? You don't set yourself up well if, you, if you're hammering your metabolism to slow down and adapt. Now it's really challenging. Well, what do you think is uh, the biggest deterrent for people to you know stick with their diet initially? They think it's so rigid, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, it's so restrictive. Like, I can't wait till I get there. And then all this magical, uh, you know, I'm going to get to that place where I feel good about my body, my weight and all this. And then I, can, then I can get back to eating, you know, those foods again. When in fact, it's even more rigid once you get there if you apply that uh, principle of, of losing weight because now 
any any calorie that goes above, like you said, that you know, eleven hundred mark or wherever you're at, uh, I mean, y- your body's going to respond. Yeah, I, here here's what I th- this is here's the strategy, and and I, the, you bring this up, Adam, how challenging a conversation is as a trainer. Someone's willing to pay me a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars to train them for a month or two months or three months or whatever, and they're like, I you know, my, I just need to lose fifty pounds, and I'm like, okay. How am I going to tell this person? I, I don't. We're not going to lose any weight for the first three months. Yeah. So the way I would say it, and this is what I'm going to say to people listening right now, is if your number one goal is to lose weight for the first three months, your goal should be to get stronger. That's it. Yeah. Your goal for the first three months is <coughs> I'm going to go to the gym, and my goal is to get strong in the gym. My goal is to feel stable, to to get good exercise technique to get stronger in core lifts, squats and deadlifts and presses and rows. And part of the process of getting stronger is to make sure I feed myself enough so that it can fuel that strength. After three months, if you've gotten significantly stronger, if you can see that you're lifting more weight and you feel tighter and you ha- and you're, and you're, again, you're stronger, now start to cut. You'll be way more successful. Now, that's very generic, okay, because it can be different from person to person. But that piece of advice right there is going to serve people far better than the traditional, uh, oh, you want to lose weight, cut your calories and go do a bunch of cardiovascular activity. For the first three months, just get strong. I Trust me, it will set you up far better than anything else uh, you've done in the past. Well, the question you asked him is, is your goal to lose as much weight as you can, as fast as you possibly can, or is your goal to lose X amount of pounds and keep it off for the rest of your life? Yeah. That's what I, I always, I would make the client say that back to me. And most all of them would be like, well, of course I want to keep off for the rest of my life. My goal isn't just to lose it real quick and then put it back on. And then you can go into explaining like the two different strategies. Yep. Like, yes, if I just decided to cut your calories dramatically from where you're currently at, I make you run every single day on the treadmill and lift weights every single mm-hmm. day, we will lose the most amount of weight possible in this short period of time. The problem with that is it's impossible or almost impossible for you to sustain that for the rest of your life. You just won't. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it happened in my entire career. I've been doing this. So if you tell me that, hey, Adam, my goal is to lose 30 pounds and then keep it off for the rest of my life, there's a different approach that we have to take. Totally. A yeah. faster metabolism is a massive asset in modern society. So just we're surrounded by so much food. Uh, it's so accessible and tasty and, and easy that having a fast metabolism, look, having a fast metabolism 50,000 years ago wasn't a great thing. Like, yeah. You don't want to be the guy or girl <laughs> who can't store body weight very easily. You're dead. You're like, you're not going to survive. But today it's the opposite. If you look, if I could snap my fingers and have everybody's metabolism increase by a thousand calories a day, we would solve the obesity epidemic overnight. Literally just because your body's burning it off naturally. So that's the idea. And then also consider this, your metabolism is with you, whether you're exercising or not. So you speed up the metabolism, you're burning more calories all the time. When you're at work at your desk, when you're watching TV with your with your kids or hanging out, you're burning more calories. So this is the strategy you want. Give yourself a little bit of time to build that strength. So initially, if your goal is weight loss, focus on that first. It'll set you up. It just it makes all the difference it's in the world. It's the only way if you want flexibility for the rest of your life and your diet. I, I've never met anybody that wants to eat you know, chicken, rice, and broccoli for the rest of their life, and that's no. it. Um, if you want to be able to enjoy a glass of wine every once in a while or a dessert yep. or go out to eat and not feel like you have to count the calories. But the problem is people don't feel that way when they're in this position because they go from you know eating 1,500 to 1,700 calories, they restrict down to 1,300 yeah. to lose weight. Well, then when they decide to you know have two glasses of wine and now they intake 500 calories, yeah. it's more than a third of their caloric intake for the day. But at that same person, I can build muscle, speed their metabolism up over the course of say three, six, nine months and get them up to where their body is burning 2,800 calories a day and they decide to have a glass or two of wine, it doesn't affect them the same way that it affects them if they were the person who was eating only 1,300 calories. 100%. Mm-hmm. 100%. All right. Uh, so I think we should talk about, I know we already talked about um, Will Smith slapping the shit out of Chris Rock at the Academy Awards. <laughs> You but didn't it like is, my underhand pitch on the wine. I it is. Yeah. I thought that was a really good underhand we'll, pitch. We'll go there. <laughs> he didn't pick up on that. Uh, we'll that go there. But idea. I want to <laughs> talk about this first because this is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, this, we'll get back to wine, but this yeah. is a big deal, right? Because it's everywhere and people are speculating crazy about what the deal is. And what I had said in the, we talked about this first about 
him getting away with it in the sense that he didn't security didn't stop him from assaulting someone. He went back to his chair, right. sat down. Not only that, won an Oscar. Not only that, got a standing ovation literally minutes after Crazy. he slapped somebody. Yeah, the, he he was there the whole time. Like partied afterwards with everybody. Like nothing happened. Dude, backlash is happening. So there's yeah. a, there's an official release from the Oscars saying you know we don't condone violence and this is terrible. They're probably considering some yeah. kind of punishment to save face. But boy, is this a reflection of the death, in my experience, my opinion, the death of old Hollywood celebrities. This so is total are, are, uh, do we believe now that it was not staged? Are you 100% on the- I think it was real. So I'm still not all the way sold. Really? I'm not. You know why? That, because- I sort of changed my mind. Uh, yeah, I'm on the fence a little more now, but I'm yeah. still not 100% convinced. What happens with the Oscars and then what happens with Chris Rock afterwards still for me is what I'm waiting for. Okay. If the Oscars really do pull his his award and or, and or say you're not invited next year or something like that, they, take, they actually punish him somehow, mm -hmm. okay, then maybe not. But I still think that they would be in on this because it's them who's going to get the greatest benefit from them. Yeah, they are getting the most views because the more people are, Oscar has been said and Googled in the last 48 hours more than probably anything oh. else has for the first time in God knows when. Yeah. So I still think that it's if a the, win for them. However you want. That's look at right. It. I, so uh, I don't if, know if it's a win. So it, the only way that they're not in on it and not OK and it wasn't something staged was if they take action, if they don't take action. I believe they were a part of it. And of course they're going to say something to if they, if they're trying to make it look like it's real but Here's not really do anything. Here's the thing, I don't think it's a win. I it's really like don't. It's like the NFL with steroids well, and stuff. It, it, it's it, like we got to act like we're doing something happen, about it but we really want it to happen. If this didn't happen, they're just going to uh like fall away into obscurity anyways. Like they yeah. their ratings nobody was watching it. Yeah, but, nobody cared except for like when Ricky Gervais uh roasted everybody. Uh this was another one of those things that just was sort of it it, it happened and all of a sudden like it just blew I, up. This, with here's publicity. why I don't think this was staged because it's not good at all. This literally highlights all the critiques about that whole industry. Yeah. The fact that A, here's one critique, comedians under attack. For making jokes. Yeah, but I see. Okay, I don't. Hold I, on. Let me keep going. There's that. Okay. There's celebrities follow a different set of rules. And boy, has that been under serious scrutiny over the last couple of years with the pandemic and yeah. the mandates and how they don't, they get caught doing whatever the hell they want. So there's that one uh, right there. There's the, you know, uh, uh, you know, how you get treated because you're a celebrity versus other people, how you got away with it, um, the expression of violence uh, just out of nowhere. Like, it's it's all it, it it makes them all look bad yeah. in a way that it can't be good. Remember the Oscars used to be about like prestige well, and I mean, royalty. You, I don't know to say they you're you're now lumping all. It's Will Smith who looks bad. The, yeah, they but everybody else doesn't look. But that's bad. not how people. And I don't buy that argument because it's uh, bad publicity is still good publicity. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's attention eyes. The way that the, those the know. Oscars makes money is views, yeah. viewerships, ad revenue. That's and they are probably been You've seen this with all old media for the last yeah last they, decade. They've gone a hundred percent. Like they love. Um, negative stories that that's what sells. And I this, think it, I, I do, think but they, there's no long if standing. They were, if they were condoning this, they have to come out and act like this. it's just like I said. It's just like the MLB and the NFL with steroids. They can't come out and condone it and say it's okay to do it. So they they put in these things to make it sound like they really want. Yeah, but, but behind closed doors, you bet your ass that they are okay with those guys. That's so juicing, different. Juicing. Nah, you can't compare. Sure, no, that's can't. a better comparison than your angle. No way, for Stero sure. No way. Steroids makes you play baseball better and football better. Steroids makes bigger. Bad publicity people. brings more attention and eyes and ad but revenue. It's, but it's wrong. It's the wrong kind because it doesn't last. What are they going to do? They're going to keep having award yeah, shows no, where I, people fight? I agree, but like you've seen this with every corporate business. Like You've seen them just bite on the you know the the negative whatever it is that they can put out there to get attention like they're using that as a form of like a tool in their toolbox i don't think so what do you think doug i mean what is the benefit to will smith he well, had to participate right yeah, yeah. destroy him zero benefit so to him one it didn't destroy that, that's him that's what's leading to that is the part I'm with you, Justin. That makes me go like, okay, okay, that, it could be real. But that also could have easily been like, maybe he didn't think that he was going to get that hammered over it. 
Maybe people, because here's the thing, you guys, he's not getting completely destroyed from this, okay? Well, no, he's a being lot of celebrated that, by a lot of people. Yes, there's lots There's just of, as many people that are going like, stand good, up. Yes, yeah, right. Good yeah. for him for defending his wife. So right. he is not being destroyed by this by any means. He hasn't been canceled. He hasn't got his award taken from him. He came out and said, apology. Everybody was under, if you look underneath his, uh, the comments, 90% of them are positive and supportive of him. Mm. So he is not getting, you know, blackballed for this at all. I, I think this so, would be the worst this attempt at getting ratings in all of history. I think it's... It, worst? It's been already proven to be successful. N n successful how? Because in the By short term... By views and attention and us talking about it. It's so negative. It's uh, it's trending uh, more negative what, than positive. What? 100%. I, no. No. Not 100%. Go look at... Like I just said, go look under the comments. Okay. Doug makes a good point. And that's the part... And, and Justin agrees. I agree that the one thing that makes me go like, God, really? Will, this makes you look kind of bad. But yeah. that's my opinion. Yeah. That's not the majority... A majority of people are if actually got, siding with it, him. Look, they, me, they gave him listen, a standing O after listen, he got up and got his award. That's I mean, because it's very, like, uh, it's very similar to this cancel culture vibe, right? It's like attack, you know, cancel. Except you know, it's a, he like didn't. this whole violent. It, it just falls right in suit with a lot listen, of this uh, th this culture. Well, if, if the Academy Award planned this, if Oscars. they all planned it, if the Oscar whatever, if they all planned this, then what security would have pulled them out right away because that's the biggest scrutiny. They were caught off guard. Will Smith got to sit down. Everybody was shocked. We don't know what to do. Standing ovation. Everybody's getting ridiculed for it. If it was planned, they would have said, okay, we need to make sure that when he does this, no. we pull him off stage. Otherwise, we all look bad. Otherwise, we all look like a bunch of yeah, I don't. I think they're opportunists is my angle, right? So I, I don't. I don't necessarily, I don't know for sure if it was not well, planned or not, right? But I'm leaning more towards it probably was not planned. Uh, but in terms of them as an organization, they're capitalizing on the intention. Yeah. 100%. No way, dude. And I, it, it's it's such, it. it the, I mean, dude. It's the they, dying cries of a... Of a of a dying industry, it's this. It's like the last. Well, gasp. that I agree. I yeah. well, I agree with you there. That's why I think it's staged. I think that they, I think they're all somewhat in on it, and they need views. They need views. They know they're dying. They're getting their ass kicked by social media. Old Hollywood is dying, and this for a moment is making them more relevant. It yeah. really is. I mean, we. When was the last time did, you talked about the Oscars? Did you know? Did you know that? So I was seeing a bunch of memes and stuff mentioning Tupac Shakur and Jada. Oh, yeah. I didn't know this. Did you know that? I didn't know what you... Yeah, Jada you, and Tupac had this really close relationship that Will was super jealous of when they first got married. How and he old wrote is, about it How in a old book. was that? Tupac died when he was 25, so he was a This a was pop. the 90s, young, yeah. and I think Will and Jada at first started this when they first got together. And he wrote about it, I guess, in some book. His book that he just wrote. Yeah, that like it really bothered him. You know, what? and here's another thing, too. I would love to see this, and we could probably look this up. We for sure we'll be able to in a couple weeks. Is look at his book sales from this. Let's see where Will Smith's book sales are in two weeks or three weeks. Sure. You know, are they are they trending up? Or are they trending down? You know, there certainly isn't people burning them in the streets. Yeah. So he didn't get. He's not. Well, he, also too, think about the anticipation for next year's Oscars. Like, what are they going to do? What hosts they're going to have? Should Chris Rock come back and have like a, a neck brace no, on? I, my get, favorite yeah. meme was that the next year's Oscars would be hosted with, by Mike with Tyson. Mike Tyson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that was a good one. I that mean, a, hey, yeah, dude, would, I, he, I would he have done it if it wasn't Chris Rock, but The Rock? Okay, I don't but, think okay. So. so if if it really caught the Oscars off no. guard. And they are not. they are not happy with this, and it makes them look so bad. Then Sal, you, what are you going to say if they don't take action? If they don't take, if they action? don't take action. Oh, they. Will. I, I think they will. Well, wait, what I'm saying, you know what I think? Here's what they're going to do. They're waiting. This is how shitty they are. This is what stupid. It's literally Dude, virtue the fake signaling. Shit. People are their minds are just exploding. They're waiting. Which way do I go? Yes, they're waiting. Let's wait and see what public set. You know what though? I, and this is why I know it's bullshit. They're getting chastised by liberal outlets like The View. They're getting chastised, but everybody's <laughs> chastising them, saying this was a terrible. Stop over generalization like that. Not everybody, Sal. It's like half and half. It's, it's literally. Not, it's not half and half. Yes, it is, no, dude. I don't think so. It's just, to, it's just, please, someone defend me here. Have you, yes, there's no. just as much support for the situation yeah, as there is negativity. No, no, there's, there's more. There's a ton of people out there that are saying like that's why they that's why they came out with their statement. That's why they they had to come out with their statement. Well, that was a that's happening no matter what, whether it was stage or not. They're going to come out with they're a statement. Say that they're, they, they have to say it's something. the whole thing with like smash and burning buildings. And like you got crack a few eggs to make an omelet or whatever like it's a mentality that needs to stop with this violent like you solve things with violence yeah you know and it's uh, uh, but there's a lot of people that think that way if right you, now if you think about it like okay if, if you think it was real or let's if you want to play that game it was real it was not a display of of manhood it was a display of weakness he slapped him of course it's not Dude. 
It was super yeah. insecure. If you're gonna make yeah. that move, you better th- throw a real right hook. It was the most insecure hook. move you could have done. <laughs> yeah, very. And it was like you know, his wife looked at him, you know, because at first he laughed kind of nervously. Well, that's that's the biggest thing, right? Yeah. It, I saw it again the Star Wars meme because that's where I live. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like he's laughing, ah, like like. Uh, Institute Order 66, and he's just like, oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, gotta, I, gotta do this thing, dude. I have to. I, I just can't, I just can't believe that he sat down, nobody did anything. And then when he got up, this is how disgusting these celebrities are. They live in such a bubble, they're the <laughs> fakest fucking people in the world. They give him a standing ovation. What? Yeah. What? Yay! You just hit a fucking comedian who Yay, made a really- Yeah, we forgot all about that two seconds ago. Not forget about it. They gave uh, him a standing uh, ovation because he it. did that. Yeah. You think they would- well, Yeah, I mean, but now you're proving my point. That, that's how many people were accepted it. They not only they accepted it, they supported it. They thought, you know what? Chris Rock was out of line. He, he yeah. went too far on a joke, which, by the way, I don't agree Dude, with. Ricky Gervais he's, went he's, he's way not. harder. Oh, I agree. I mean, I mean, really, to me, if you, did you guys ever watch? Did you watch the whole... I watched his whole YouTube thing that he did on his weight loss journey. I don't know if you guys watched yeah. all of it. I watched the whole thing. I don't watch the whole thing. He's before. definitely he's definitely mentally tortured and has a lot going on. Oh, and so yeah. you add that. You add his whole yeah. red table thing where his wife come, sits down and I they think talk. His, I think his wife abuses him. That's what I think. It's, Seriously. Yeah, I think in a he's emotionally abused. I, I don't disagree with that yeah. I, I don't disagree with that at all it and that's a lot like that if it was real that makes a little more sense like right he's com- he he is de- definitely not the one who's wearing the pants in the relationship in this situation Ooh, that and, looks bad huh yeah well and then she kind of m- makes that look where she was you know disapproving of that joke and because right before that he's laughing yep. yeah i mean he's kind of like la- whether it's awkwardly laughing or not he's still pretending to play well, along do that at first yeah right right, right. Ah, but then when he like, looks over and he sees jada and realizes that it's not not <laughs> well, okay you don't like this babe Ooh. oh shit i'm gonna hear this about this later <laughs> you go slap the guys i mean i i i feel like if it uh if it was real uh and it was not staged that the the oscars have to do something they have even if, i don't care if it's zil- as simple as he doesn't get an invite next year or but they have to take some sort of action to to say that we oh, don't the pr condone, they have to that we don't condone condone that behavior and this is unacceptable otherwise then it does become a jerry springer show like what happens next year you know what i'm saying if will smith smacks chris rock i mean you know what's gonna happen i'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen and this is why i love <laughs> this is why i have so much respect for the art of comedy in terms, especially stand up comedians. Dude. Because yes. they're always, because they are going to push comedians. You know what's going to happen? There's going to be entire bits done about Will Smith and his family. 100%. Oh, he oh. opened himself up. Because getting- you know, like that's that's something that they think about every time they go on stage. There's some drunk asshole that's going to talk trash to them and, and want to come up there and come on stage. If they don't have security, you know, that's a, a real well, viable threat. Well, I don't know about you guys. So I watch stand up. I know you do, Jess. I watch stand up all the time. There was a second there, literally, it was a very short period of time where comedians were a little, they were getting attacked and canceled. Yes. And they came back with a vengeance. The stand-up comedy I'm seeing now is really, like, they go off the rails. Well, this is where part of my whole cancel culture thing, I feel like like they encourage that because they want to silence a lot of the, uh, you know, the opposition voice, like the comedic voice, the canary in the coal mine kind of calling you out for the absurdity of everything. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like... It, you know, to, to, to stifle somebody's opinion, like it's just easy as a slap. Yeah. You know? All right. Well, I mean, they, they have set the table for, you know, everybody that's in comedy for like the next two years. It's like, that will be the biggest Dude. joke ever. Like, I don't, have you guys. Will Smith looks bad on all angles in this. Oh, yeah. Have you ever seen, I have never seen as many memes and stuff made <laughs> over a, a situation you know what the, that you know what, fast was, and that It was much. just rife you, for you, it. You know what else this highlights? Just how like fake people's uh, outrages on social media and what they care about. It literally took a celebrity slapping another celebrity to erase Ukraine news off my feed. I know. Gone. Crazy. Gone. Nobody cares for, for however long this, you know, takes up the feed. Yeah. Isn't that funny? It in, is. Like overnight, I go on my, it's like, oh, nobody, nobody's debating and arguing over this thing that they pretend to care about so well, much. It's sad, but again, yeah, it's, it, it's crazy uh, to see that. Well, I'll, dude, honestly, thank God it was the same race because if it was a, a black and a white guy or like, or anybody like a minority and a white guy, it would have been fucking. They would have turned it into a race. Oh thing. my God. It would have yeah. turned the whole thing into a race thing. It would have been the worst thing ever. And yeah. then they talk about the pressure for the Oscars to say or do something, then they really would, would put on. Right now, I think they're trying to take the angle like I told you it's just oh it's like a family barbecue and oh two friends or uncles got upset at each yeah. other and reacted and so maybe we're going to brush it did you see what's rug. his name offered them 15 million each to fight oh uh, Jake Paul I knew it 
<laughs> he's like well, the that, he's going to be the he's going to be this generation's having, Don King. He is. Yeah. He's going to make so much money bartering and in, in creating these deals. Well, have any of them though? I don't know if anyone's actually accepted any of his because he throws out like outlandish ones, and I don't know if anybody has actually jumped on it and said yes, they'll do it. So I mean, he's this is like the third one I've seen him put out there, like calling out that yeah. I'll pay X amount of dollars to see something, and I haven't seen. I can't. I can't it. see high level. A level celebrities doing this. I feel like that's a career destroying move, but I can see a lot of C level players and a lot of like, you know, social well, media. Well, that's people. what we're seeing right now with social yeah. media. A lot of these, you know, uh, I don't know what you, what, what, well, screech is that C, porn? Is that C uh, list? <laughs> that yeah. says anything. I mean, that's his little, what's his yeah. real name? Dustin Diamond or whatever? Yeah. It's, oh, what, what, what is joke, it? but I think he's, he died now. Oh, no. If, if like you're like a super, like an Oscar award winning uh, actor or actress, you are considered like an A list actor. Yeah. So what is, what's like a, 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 you know, 10 million followers on Instagram? What are you? Are oh, you, what, what are you? Z? Like, <laughs> like, like how do you get how do you, what, what's what what separates a list actors b list like what is it that that does that I and think, then where does where does now because i think we all we agree. can't really call him an actor right like, well I, I think we all agree that social media is now i mean we, your kids right your yeah. kids know youtube yeah. stars more than they know big actors and actors that it's obviously it's moving in that direction mm -hmm. so are we going to start ranking like Instagram and YouTube celebrities. That's a good same. question. It's going to be like, oh, I'm sure a, that's a list coming. YouTuber or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because again, like I won the last time, like my kids don't know anything about either of the, and it's Chris Rock and Will Smith. Those are huge celebrities. Yeah, they don't like, give they're a shit. like, what? Who cares? I know the only people who's shared. Dan, where's Dan TDM? <laughs> the only, whoever, oh. like, guy that they watch <laughs> Mr. on Beast. YouTube. Yeah, yeah Mr. The, only, the only people are sharing Beast, these memes actually. are all people are 40 and above. Actually, no, the memes. So my 16 year old son knows about it because of the memes. Okay. Like, but is that the only see, reason why he really- That's why. Because he don't know probably all the drama in their no. life and no. the how Jada- He recognized Will Smith because yeah. he's seen movies with him, but didn't know his name. But wow. the memes are flying wow. everywhere. Wow. That, talk about how crazy that is. That's, yeah. it's, it's a dying, it's a completely dying industry and I couldn't be happier because it, I really for a long time they just- preach and they get away with murder and they tell us what to do and they'd live totally different. Yeah. I can't stand that. They shit. might actually just have to focus on, uh, you know, making better movies. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. You know, speaking of celebrities, I felt a little bit like a celebrity yesterday doing uh photo shoots professionally with Doug, you know, <laughs> uh, I always feel so Sound skipped out before you do the mud mask. Hold on a second. I, mean, I did. I did a whole bunch of stuff and then I had to take off. Can I say how much I hate that stuff, dude? I uh, just don't, none of us, I think really like it. I think, it just feels. I think so Justin kind of likes. Yeah, it. <laughs> Justin does. I like mean, it. out of the three of us, I'm probably like You're the coolest ham. with it, right? Yeah. Like, like I, I don't, I don't, I just don't care. This is my thing. Like, yeah, yeah. put something on my face. You know, yeah. put something on my head. It feels weird to me. I yeah. well, you know, you know what though? So yesterday was the first time that I did the whole like the whole trifecta thing, right? So the the what is it? The deep cleanse thing that they that they have, and then I did. Or so the, you actually use them, and he filmed it. Yeah, yeah, Doug. So Doug took up photos of me using each one of the Caldera products. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I actually, so I have half of my Caldera stuff is at home in the shower on my sink, and then half is over here. And so I've actually never, being completely honest, done it the way you're supposed to, like one after another, yeah. and to put on. Dude, my skin felt. I did a little clip, dude. Like, and I got hella DMs from people like, "Wow, dude, your skin looks like you can visibly see a difference." Yeah, that mud mask was a trip. Oh, you know? and like, my I face felt, felt amazing from it. <laughs> you guys are I, I so get, I, bro, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I gotta get it. Hold on a second. I didn't what's have my order? cucumbers, but you what, know. what's the order? So we started with the deep, which is their reviving mask. Okay. And so they so that's the mask. Yeah, they yeah. put it all over their face, and then they rinse that off. And the next thing they used was the clean slate to wash up the the skin afterwards. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, you finish off with the oil. Yeah, with the serum. Yeah, I use I use the serum. And you would regularly. normally add, which I didn't have. I didn't have the cream to put over. You would go after to seal the oil, right? Isn't that how that works? Yeah, I think the way they list it out is their recommended protocol is to. I think is it mornings you do the, I think uh, the morning, cream and then evening you do the serum. oil. Okay. Yeah. So I use the serum. That's the one thing that I use pretty consistently, yeah. and it's it, like I said, I I would never in in the past I never put anything on my face because I have this natural uh oily mediterranean whatever skin so you know really you just nice. glow right, between the time. now and the next time we have a caldera commercial i want you to do the whole thing just so you can it. feel it yeah i'll try because you have to i mean it really I, so i've done the mask and i you definitely can tell that yeah. it, it it does something for sure but i just use the serum and the reason what trips me out is i was reluctant because i already have oily skin i'm, I'm yeah. gonna put oil 
on my oily skin. I'm going to look yeah. like a grease ball. <laughs> and, it, and it balances out my skin, actually. What it does is it, it makes it so that it's more balanced. So it's not just oil for dry. or Because Justin's dry. It balances him out, too. <laughs> he tries fuck, I dude. Am, <laughs> I'm, I'm like crack, desert over cracky here. McCrack. He's a, <laughs> he's a sponge. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, back to wine. Putting All right, dry Adam. guy. Yeah, you, you brought up wine. Since you earlier. missed my underhead pitch earlier on the wine. One. No, I, I want to set up our commercials. Hella good there. Dude, I dude. just got back yeah, into wine. Dude. Honestly, like I, I avoided wine forever. No, check this out. Hangovers. So, Public Goods sells wine. Yeah, they sell them in six and twelve packs. I saw. You that. could buy a six pack. You could buy a twelve pack. The variety six pack is ninety four bucks. Not bad for yeah. a variety of six bottles of wine. The twelve pack is one seventy. So it's even better. But check this out. This is good shit. Their Pinot is made in Italy. Their Malbec is made in France. The Rosé is made in France. And then uh, the Red Blend is made in Chile. And I believe the Chardonnay is made in California. So, like, this is legit now, are those international. I mean, Doug's probably the biggest wine out of all of us, if I had to guess. Are you, are you the bigger probably wine? Likes, he likes wine. I'm yeah. the biggest wine out. Now, is, now, what you just brought up, is that, are each of those areas known for that specific type of yes. wine? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, I would say so. Okay, I mean, again, so that's interesting. I'm not so, that nerdy about. So the I whole wonder thing. if they that's what they did, right? So they they sourced the the best type of wine in the the, the well, most popular uh, area for that type. Yeah, of wine. Yeah, they've also uh, sourced organic wines. Oh, oh I that's didn't know. A big they're deal. all organic. Organic. Uh, okay, so no I, added sulfites. Okay, so now I want to try it because the organic wine I've tasted it tastes like shit. Just being and honest. and do you guys so far? And you guys get wine. a reaction from where they add the wine that makes, messes gives you like a histamine response? Is it the sul, sulfites? Yeah, sulfites, sulfates. I'm not See, sure. That's that, so the they don't add them to these wines. All that stuff. That's all, what gave I, me hangovers. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I mean, I don't know what uh, cla is classified as an organic wine. What can or cannot be included? Well, I'm reading right now. I'm reading here okay. that there's no added sulfites, which. For some people, when they they'll drink wine and they'll get like a histamine response. They also yeah. red, they also can't use nose. like the pesticides and stuff on the sprays on the on the. Oh uh, really? Yeah, that's part of what makes it. Or I believe so. Um, yeah, I have sometimes a reaction to wines. I, there was a brand, so a, a, like a couple of years back, a I, I don't want to roll. I get a reaction bus, to it. But there was drunk. a organic wine, a popular organic wine that came after us to do advertising, and I remember we tried it, and it was just it was garbage. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. I mean, I, I wanted to. I wanted to be able to promote a organic, better choice like a wine for our audience, but I'm like, if I don't like it, I can't. I'm not want to do commercials about something that I think tastes like shit. Yeah, so, so I'm but like, I haven't had this, so we'll see. I'll, I'll try it out. It would be a great gift. Yeah, I'm like that with wine. So, so here's what's interesting. If you guys, you guys have been, everybody's been to Europe here, right? Have you been to Europe, Justin? Yeah, just mainly the British Isles. Okay, but. so have you ever had wine in like Italy or France versus wine here? It doesn't affect you the same, and it's because they don't add the same shit. This is what I've read. They don't add the same stuff that tends to cause that histamine response. So no, I've noticed that. that wine can make give me the worst. I mean, I know hangover. that. I noticed that about just eating and drinking in Europe in general. Like I feel better. Foods that would normally kind of mess me up in the states when I when I ate them in France, I didn't feel. Did that you? Way. I've heard that from grains too. Yes. Yeah, like yeah. the pastas yeah. and all. So. I Less although right now or a different type of no uh, so so I so I can react to gluten sometimes yeah. uh, depending on how my gut is but even when my gut's feeling good if I just keep pushing gluten uh, after you know a week of it it'll it'll mess me up in Italy when I went to Italy this was this was years ago and it was it was my my gut wasn't doing very well but I went there and I literally said you know what I'm just gonna just throw caution to the wind I don't care I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna work out we were in a small town. The gym was closed for the summer, which was really infuriating. It was stupid. So yeah. I went there and I had pasta all day long and it was delicious and bread. And I didn't react and I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. So I did some research. So here, what we do here often with our wheat is we use uh, glyphosates mm. as a desiccant. I think right. that's the right term, yes. right? Yeah, Where yeah. we spray the glyphosates on to dry the wheat. Mm -hmm. In Europe, they don't do that. In Europe, if they do that, they have to label it. Yeah. So they don't do that. So they have the the glyphosate load is we much get lower. Hammer with glyphosates, like from every angle here. We also use wheat here that's higher in gluten than the wheat that they use over there. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, because gluten gives wheat. It's a protein it's, it's of wheat like that a gives binder, it, right? It's yes. more structure to it. Yeah. So I noticed the same freaking so thing. So why? Why? Explain to me why? Why do we use more? And that what's the what's the it benefit? makes it hardy, makes it last longer, uh, produce more. Uh, and then the the glyphosate they like spray on shelf life and stuff or like or that. Or I think that's something along those lines. So the thing about Europe that oh, is, okay, so we'll talk about Italy for example. They have a long culture of food, 
And so they have these laws that protect regions, but the inadvertent, you know, kind of like the accidental, uh, I guess, side effect of that is it's harder for food manufacturers to add weird shit to food. Mm. So like if you get a particular type of cheese, like in Italy, they have laws that say this type of cheese can only be made in this region. You mm. can't make, if you make it somewhere else, you can't call it that type of cheese uh, or this wine. That's how they are with wine. Pure yes. Cheese. Right. Yes. France will do the same thing. Right, and that isn't champagne only from one place yes. in the world. If you that's get it, if France, you buy it somewhere else, even if it's made exactly the same, can't call it champagne. You can't call it champagne. Yeah. You have to call it. I, didn't, I thought that was really interesting. Bubble yeah. wine. Yeah. 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 So they, so they do that, but the side effect of that is they, they stay closer to their original. Now the, the other side effect is more expensive and yeah. less available. But uh, the food is more closer to its original, the way that they made it back in the day. So. Speaking of cheese, I, I'm so glad I can bring this up. Um, <laughs> Ethan was talking to me the other day about uh, like he's he's been hanging out with his friends and they all have bikes and they kind of uh, you know have created their own biker gang. Oh, and yes. so he's like, "What?" I'm like, "You got a biker gang?" He's like, "Yeah, we're gonna get jackets and do the whole thing. We're the cheese weasels." What? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, and I about died, dude. I was like, who came up with that name? You know, I did. And I'm just like, okay. You know, you, you understand I get roasted all the time for my obsession with cheese, right? Yeah. Cheese uh, like, weasels. So, but I thought it was a great name. I'm like, I'm like, I'll oh, think about make the logo. Vest, dude. You, yeah. You have yeah. to make them a I'm like, cool get you guys some patches. Yeah, you know, dude. you guys uh, mob together. CW. Before you guys go for a ride, everyone takes a bite of the block That's of cheese uh, and pass it around the group. They have to have a handshake. That's right. Yeah, do they, have, do they have rivals yet? Let's ride, boys. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, they, they're they're gonna get them. You know, yeah. obviously, dude. Have you ever, you ever you ever hear about the gang names in like the forties and fifties? They were weird like that. Yeah, like the Jets. We're the Jets. <laughs> we're the, yeah, we're you the know, Jets. Like, and then they, they break out in song. Yeah, no, that yeah. was that's oh, that's like all the musicals I've seen. <laughs> What's that movie? Yeah. West Side Story. Yeah. God, I love that. Have you guys ever watched West Side Story? Do, I don't think I have do, seen it all the way through. Oh, I've seen like parts a lot of doo wops in there. Oh, such a Maria. Such a great movie. They they remade that. Movie, it was okay, not bad, mm -hmm. but the original is, uh, is one of the best. I'll come up with a song for the cheese weasels. Yeah, I love it. But no, they had funny gang names, and then later on, gang gang names got real crazy and tough sounding. But yeah, back then it was silly. Hey, I saw the article that Jackie sent over about Elon Musk. Is that you think? Do you think that's a real possibility? He's so gonna... he did a poll on Twitter. Yeah, saying, you brought it. You brought it up first. I know that. Yeah, so so that's what's making the news, right? So he did a poll that said, "Do you think something along the lines of?" Do you think the alg that Twitter should make their algorithm open source so that everybody knows who's getting more, why some people get more views than others? And totally love okay. that. And and he and of course most people said yes, which I, you know what I think that's brilliant. Of course, because social media is under attack for being like changing the rules and and isolating certain groups. Well, if it was open source, I think it would be no problem. So right. he he did that. Then people said, "Would you ever start your own or whatever?" He says, "I'm seriously considering it." So starting his own social media. Anything that's the, he does, I'm following. Dude. You know, like I'm 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 paying attention. That's you, the you one have guy. to love that like he intentionally looks for markets just to disrupt. Yes. That is so cool. He's to the me. master of, of disrupting. That is, that's what's that's industries. so cool to me. Like most people are like thinking about like, oh, where can I make the most money? Where's the blue ocean? Like they're yeah. trying to think like that, which is like smart to yeah. do that. But the fact that like he has the the confidence and the brilliance to go like I'm going to fuck that market up right there. Yeah, this, but like, okay. They're doing it wrong. I'm going to go in and just disrupt the shit out of it. I yeah. mean, let's talk about this. Though. Like, do, he does not have time. <laughs> it's like all those other business. I mean, he's going to Mars. Like, we, <laughs> did you listen to that podcast? No. Like, okay, so, yeah, well, it, this was with Lex Friedman, and um, I forget the, the lady's name, but she's an like MIT um, a professor there okay. who... Um, has worked with NASA before and, and her, her whole family, I think is, is astronauts, but a very, very good podcast. They were kind of speculating what it would take uh, to colonize Mars and this whole thing. I did not know that technically when, when um, Mars aligns with earth, it only takes like six to nine months to get there, but then it takes three years total to get back wow. because you have to go through orbit till it lines up again to get back to Earth. So round trip, you're so looking at like So three every years. three years, Mars is in a position to where it's close enough to Earth. Where it only takes the six trip months. Is, right. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, and what was really cool is they were talking about like self-organizing uh, tiles and materials to make these massive structures. Oh. So they've already like... Uh, I have again, I'm not gonna get into the science, but uh, apparently they can like find each other and like organize and create these structures, uh, autonomously. You know, the weirdest thing to me about the whole Mars thing is that 
like like let's imagine like all the bad things that that, that could happen to this earth because of how what we're doing to it and everything like that like imagine like the, the worst of it. i still think of it as a better place than mars yeah yeah like there's the storms and the like you it's red dude i've said that i know it's like <laughs> the most in inhospitable place you can go right it's like yeah it's like, it's like worse even, than it's worse than antarctica it's worse than the 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 deep ocean yeah no, i so i'm but more, i'm less in the science of going there and surviving there and building an atmosphere and it's cool i, I think well, it's cool but i'm less interested in that than the psychology of the people who are going to go there and what it's going to do to them. Have you read this test that they've done on, on astronauts to see what would happen if we sent them that far away to where just communicating with earth yes. could take days, let alone, you know, getting back with just three years they've run tests and they find that what, what, what's likely to happen is that they'll start slowly not listening to commands on earth and start slowly being like, just like colonists. It's no different yeah. than when colonists, Left, went to the new world from England. Eventually, what do they do? Revolution. We want independence. Every single colony did that throughout the, the history of the world. <laughs> yeah. So you said, okay, you, so you, Mars will have their own thing. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. Yeah. Have fun. Uh, There'll be a war. Where, yeah. <laughs> Mars versus Earth. No, not going to terraform there will, there will it. Any... A, there will be a war. But I, I, I mean, so what? Go make your own rules on Mars. I mean, if you want to go live there and go do that, well, then like. Here's my thought with it. The whole thing is that that is a goal, hum uh, uh, like for humanity to focus on something like that is so much more positive than all this geopolitical bullshit yeah. that we're going through right now. It, like if we could it, talk about like something to to create unity again amongst people and like have an objective. Like I think that we need to focus more on like getting to Mars dude, just for that fact. Do you think of the the ultimate way to like start over? Like oh. God, another bad relationship and I lost my job. You know what? You know, instead of moving to like another country, I'm going to Mars. Yeah, first I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going Airbnb, to the planet. Airbnb over Mars yeah. for yeah. seven I'm going nine, to Mars. Fuck this. <laughs> three years, I'll be back. Uh, yeah. So they haven't figured out how you could have like a kid in space yet. Why? Uh, huh? Yeah, because the, of the, the gravity. Anti gravity. Yeah. And oh. like there's just so many complications with that. Even if you're on bottom? <laughs> <laughs> no, not creating. Oh, the kid, that's what bro. I thought you meant. Oh, okay, so we can create them. I mean, can't. there are difficulties with that too, and they kind of skimmed over that. I was like, I, I started leaning in, you know, like, how, how's this work? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they, yeah. No, because I guess gravity about, affects the whole process. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense because yeah. everything on Earth evolves with this type of gravity. Yeah. The only way that we know how to create gravity so far is through centrifugal force. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, in, in, until we figure that out, it's going to be really weird. Yeah. And people, I mean, have you guys read the accounts of the the guy who was on the space station the longest and how long, like how, how fucked, fucked up, up his body was, was after, when he came yeah, back? Yeah. Really weird. Well, yeah. I mean, you got like no bone density at that point. His, uh, everything didn't work. Digestion was weird. How long, how long ago was that though? That was a while back, right? It took him, I think, a year for No, no, no How long did he, that was a long time ago. Oh yeah, it was a while ago. Because since then, like they've, I mean, have you seen some of the cool stuff they have now? Like the way they strength train and the, yeah. the mm -hmm. I mean- I, I think they're doing things to are already to yeah they have that, a lot right? more cool uh, tools available for fitness and things but also what one other point that I thought was interesting was they're trying to recruit like more artists uh, to to be involved with the whole Mars thing because they want to bring in a different perspective and all this stuff like they've actually had students create a uh, musical instrument that can only be played in in they don't call it anti or zero gravity they call it like a minimal gravity or whatever because nothing is like without like I, I don't know why but it Doug just pulled up how much gravity actually it's, it's 0.375 that of earth yeah so, so to, uh, dude wow. you can bench like more than twice as much <laughs> <laughs> hey when you said an instrument of yeah. Mars that you're gonna create like a Martian instrument I don't know I just immediately thought of that the, the bar scene in Star Wars oh yeah <laughs> you know, <laughs> <weird old instrument. laughs> and of course they they I have no idea how it works but I'm like really interested in in what how that works and everything. Uh, the other thing was uh, the physics, right? In terms of like, if you're going to play sports and everything, you know how you have that like natural kind of curve because of gravity. Oh, yeah. if you're Football throwing, field's going to have to be way longer. So, you, Well, it's like, it's more, you got to think more like how hey, you throw darts or like throwing something. It's going to go directly in line with, with however you move it. 
So you have to think more in like straight lines than yeah. you do like with yeah. the arc. A football is going to be like yeah. a five pounds over there. It'd be there. weird to play sports up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. I, I like that. I like that a lot. I have, so this is, I mean, moving us from uh, science over to business because I read an article that I thought was really interesting. Uh, any guesses, first of all, like, uh, do you guys do you guys believe that we have companies that have existed for 150 years or more? Oh, very few. <laughs> yes, very few. Very few, if any. Mm. Okay, so we do Just like oil companies. We do have companies that have, have been around for over 150 years. And any guesses on how many? It's got to we'll be do an over little. under with you guys. See what oh, you guys got. Justin will do his one fifty. <laughs> I, no, I'd say less than five, five or less. I'll take twelve. Five hundred and forty. Really? That wow. many? I yeah. win. Yeah, that's impressive, right? Yeah. 540 companies that have well, been- Name better. some of them. Oh, I don't know them off the top oh. of my head. You can pull up, you know, pull up uh, the I know, uh, Sears and Roebuck. I, I, Allianz Life, which a German life insurance company has been around for like 160 years. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah pull, pull it up. You can. There's some, There's some. I was looking through the top 25, and there's a couple on there that you'll recognize. Coca-Cola is not that old. No. 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 Not that old. Um, yeah. you'll, you'll recognize some names. I reckon, I, off the top of my head, I read the article a few days ago, so I don't remember the, all, all of them, but there was, there was some brands on there that I was like, oh, okay, I, uh, I, I know that brand. And, but then there's a lot that I have no idea. I just, I, but I think that's interesting, right? A company that's yeah. been around for that long and you don't even know, and just think of how strong it has many, to be. Are to. many of them like just small companies? That, Jim Beam. No. So oh, big, yeah, like, yeah. Jim are Beam. Are you serious? Yeah, Jim King Beam. Arthur oh, Baking Company. Go, Baking deep, go deeper than eight, because when you started, when I started getting down to 15, 20, that range is where I really started to recognize more names. So you guys will definitely recognize some of the names, but- yeah. Yeah, right? Interesting that they to last that long. I saw Baker's Chocolate. Never heard of that before. Uh, J.P. Morgan. Yeah, there you go. J.P. Morgan. Oh, yeah. you, obviously, lizard people. Dupont. Continue. I can't. Yeah, more, Dupont, lizard, more lizard that people. Font size. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, These not. are all lizard people. Company. Does. Colgate. Colgate. Yeah. Yes. Remington Ammunition. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Brooks Brothers. Macy's. All these, yeah, oh, wow. a, lot, a lot of companies. Actually. What did yeah. they brush your teeth with? With coal? What was in Colgate 150 years ago? Uh, I wonder. Coal. <laughs> <laughs> it's all black. It's it works. Braces it seem to be working yeah. so well. I don't know why. <laughs> that was probably heroin. Uh, now, you, you ever look at yeah. it, you ever look at old? You feel real good yeah. when you're done. You ever look at old like medicines from back in the day? There was an old cough syrup bottle I saw and it had fucking heroin and cocaine uh, yeah. in it. Yeah. it was for kids. Yeah, dude. I, I don't know. I give it Sounds to Timmy. A lot more His cough fun back then, but also the work was way harder. So you know, it kind of offsets. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Makes well, what's sense. the what, the opiate one that was that was so. Uh, Lotto, what's the what's the famous opiate that's been around forever that they used to give opium? In, is it, yeah, opium. That's yeah. what is it? Was it opium? Yeah. Was that the name of it? I yeah, thought it was the original. I one. thought it was Lotum. Lot Lotium or Lotum. Mm. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. But I know that was like a really popular. <laughs> that's all. That's all it is. It's just huh, pure. Justin. You got a headache. You should do some cocaine. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> that's yeah. how they did it. Oh, <laughs> that will definitely help. You lost your foot, Adam. Here, sprinkle some heroin on it. <laughs> You'll feel better. Um, imagine though, how good of a company you have yeah. to be to have been around 150 years though, and to con continue to reinvent yourself. That's to, crazy to be around even today. That's I mean, wild. You just rarely. I mean, I, I saw a stat the other day that the you know the. S and P five hundred within like fifty years, like eighty something or ninety percent of it. Warren Buffett's like yeah, invested in all of them. Well, yeah, he's, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Actually, I'm sure he's he in probably all, owns all, all of those ones. More lizard people. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, real quick, look, if you eat a low-carb diet or you just don't eat a lot of heavily processed foods and you work out, chances are you're not getting enough sodium. No joke. That's true for a lot of people. And signs of low sodium, you can't get a good pump, you're weaker, you got less energy. If you're low carb, you may get that keto flu, which actually usually is low sodium. You got to try LMNT. LMNT is an electrolyte powder. It tastes good, no artificial flavors. So it's got all the electrolytes, but it has the appropriate levels of sodium. I love this product. When I first saw it, I, saw, I thought to myself, what's the big deal? It's electrolyte powder. I've tried those a million times. This is different. I got great pumps and performance in the gym from their product. So much so that we actually invested in the company. That's how much we like LMNT. So uh, go try them out. And actually, right now, you'll get a free sample pack. So you don't have to buy any. You could try it out for free and see what I'm talking about. Uh, if you're interested, head over to maps, excuse me, mindpumppartners.com um, and click on LMNT and get yourself that free sample pack. Just pay shipping. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Angelina from California. Angelina, how can we help you? Hi, um, this is so exciting. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Angelina. Um, I am a group fitness instructor and a fairly new personal trainer. I just received my personal training certification last year in September. 
Um, and as you guys know, these certifications don't really do anything for you besides give you this label that allows you to practice. And honestly, the real learning comes after the fact, right? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I've had the most experience through teaching and experience with my clients and watching videos about correct form, following the right people. And honestly, Mind Pump has taught me a lot. I'm really grateful for you guys. And I really value your expertise. And it's been really awesome because I'm a full-time student and trying to work and trying to grow my business and to listen to you guys on my commutes and to listen to you guys during my workouts. It's been really helpful and I feel like I'm learning constantly. So thank you. That was my long way of saying thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, nice. But basically, so I just quit my commercial gym jobs and I am working at a private gym. I'm trying to hone in on my personal training. And as a personal trainer, I really care about teaching my clients proper function and um, that mind to muscle connection. I really love to focus on that. And one of the movements I have been really struggling with myself and with teaching is deadlifts. And honestly, I feel like there's so much conflicting information out there about deadlifts and the different types. And I would love for you guys to help break it down for me. Um, so I kind of wrote like a question rant in, but I'm going to just kind of go and you can stop me. Um, but basically, so one of the biggest things is I'm struggling between Romanian deadlifts and straight leg deadlifts. I feel like there's a lot of confusion out there. I used to set the dead, the bar down every single time with my straight leg deadlifts, but I'm seeing that they're both supposed to hover, but then some people say, no, set it down every time with your straight leg deadlifts. And so I'm wondering, do you hover with both? And should I be going all the way down or only to my range of motion? Because it's so weird because I personally, I can't stop feeling pain in my lower back with just RDLs, but I don't feel them at all with my straight leg deadlifts. So I want to kind of break down like what they're both working and yeah, let's break that move, let's, pattern. Let's break, yeah. let's break that down before we move on to all the rest of them because I yeah. know you're going to list off all of them. And you know, Sal, Sal communicates this really well when he talks about like, it, you can do any movement so long as you you move safely, right? So there's people that have right. the, f the flexibility to do a stiff legged deadlift where they take the the bar all the way down to the ground. Um, right. Most people don't. Uh, the, most people, by the time they get that bar close to the ground, the low back will start to round, and so that's what really matters. Mm. Um, yeah. And so that that's the that's first and foremost, right? So if you have if you're somebody who can do a stiff legged deadlift and you can move the bar all the way down the ground and and put it at rest, you can do that. Also, they become a little bit different exercises if you keep the the barbell hovering versus setting it down, right? right. So if mm -hmm. you're doing like a traditional deadlift where you set the bar down, there's a lot more emphasis on the concentric portion of the exercise, right? The pulling yes. it up and then you're kind of letting the bar drop all the way back down to the ground. So right. you're, it's just a there they're, they're all valuable. They're all focusing on different things. Different intent for yeah. each one. And 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 it's there's not like this. Not this is wrong. This is right. It's you know traditionally you do an RDL and you don't let the 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 barbell go all the way to the ground. But if you were somebody mm -hmm. who had that flexibility, it doesn't mean that you you can't do that. It just changes the exercise a little bit, right? If I if I have to hover and I can't set it down and I'm doing five to six reps, I'm consistently keeping tension back on my hamstrings and my glutes, right? Whereas mm -hmm. if I set the bar down, I get that moment of rest and then the focus is more on the lifting the bar up and not right. so much on mm -hmm. the lowering the weight. So yeah. you kind of change the movement. Yeah, Angelina, right. with, with the deadlifts, uh, first off, you, you, a couple things. Um, I think this will help too with deadlifts in general. Generally, don't look at deadlifts as a body part or muscle specific exercise. They just don't mm -hmm. lend themselves very well to that. Now, of course, a rear, you know, a Romanian deadlift or stiff legged deadlift, you could say is a hamstring and glute exercise. And, and that's true. But I don't like to focus on them like I would a more isolation exercise. When it comes to deadlifts, I am almost always teaching my clients to, to perfect the technique and the form and not worry mm -hmm. about where, <clears throat> which muscle group we're feeling it in. Now, of course, that doesn't mean you ignore if you feel something wrong, but it's really about the movement more than anything. Um, and and they just they just work better that way. As far as the rear, de you know, the Romanian deadlift and stiff legged deadlift, the key is that the 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 spine stays in a fixed position. Okay, so <clears throat> you get mm -hmm. in a neutral spine, you you bend at the hips, right? So it's hip flexion and extension, not yeah. lumbar. 
and the spine stays fixed. And if the spine can continue to stay fixed and you hit the floor, that's fine. If the spine starts to re- to to flex round or extend, at the bottom, then yeah, you you got you went past the range of motion um, got it. that you own. So so that's what you watch. Mm-hmm. So if you can go all the way down, very few people can do that, by the way, with right. really really good you know spine positioning. But if you can, then that's totally fine to go all the way to the ground. Now, if you want right. to get a client who can't do that, but you'd like them to set the weight down as well, so you can reset between every rep, mm-hmm. which is totally fine. Mm-hmm. Then what you would do is you would have them place the weights on blocks or on a uh, bench. So you would raise the floor essentially so that they can yeah. put the weight down, reset their position. I, I would do this all the time with clients because that spine position is so hard to yeah. maintain for some people that I right. would have them set the weight down on a bench or blocks. We would pause, reset our mm-hmm. position. I always Especially reset when it gets clients. heavier, it's difficult. Like with the hover, I yes. feel like I can, yeah. when I'm setting it down, I feel like I can lift so much heavier than when I'm hovering. Because you're resetting. The, the risk goes way up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because right. Exactly. Part. Yeah. Yeah. And control. So yeah, in terms of like mm-hmm. beginner to intermediate, I always suggest, you know, um, to setting uh, it down. Reset. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, exactly, that's what I would do. And then you, you said with the Romanian deadlift, you feel more low back pain than a stiff legged. Yeah. It's so weird. I, I feel like I think because I'm there's, in my head there's about movement, there's movement in the spine. That's what's yeah. Happening. Well, well, yeah. That's what's happening. It, it's so weird though because with my straight leg deadlift, I'm not feeling my lower back at all, and I feel like my range of motion is like I, I I'm also a Pilates instructor, and I feel like I have very flexible hips, yeah. and I feel like my range of motion is great with my straight leg deadlifts. But I think with my Romanian deadlifts, I'm really focusing on like I want to feel it in my glutes, yeah, and I'm not feeling it in my glutes. And then I just start to feel this lower back pain. Here, here's what's probably happening. Yeah. I'd have to watch your form, but I'm going to make a, a, right. a educated guess that you're overarching your spine with the Romanian deadlift. Yeah. That's the I think problem. that might be what it is. Cause yeah. I'm not, I'm watching videos and I'm like, I'm not rounding my lower spine. Cause I feel like yeah. that's the common thing. That's why you would feel lower back pain, yeah. but I'm not seeing a round. I, it might be that I'm you're really trying to focus on like yeah. sticking my glutes out. Cause yes. that's what people say to do. Yes. You're that arching, is, you're arching mm. the hell out of your low back to, to Probably, stick the yeah. butt back. It's so he, one or two. I would say it's either that my guess was going to be that there's just movement in the, in the lumbar spine. So when you, in a, when you're mm. in a soft bend in the knee, so the, one of the benefits I feel of doing a stiff legged is you can kind of lock the, you lock the body in a position. The, the knees are locked out, the hips, you can lock out and all you're focusing on is sliding the hips back as you drop down. Where right. when you're in an RDL, you have kind of this soft bend in the knees. And so there's, you're kind of concentrating on keeping them in that fixed position and you can easily go up or yeah. down. And sometimes mm-hmm. what that'll cause is even though you're not rounding at the low back, there's movement in the low back. And so that, you know, you feeling it in the low back and you're, you're loading the bar, you might just be feeling it in that. So it's either what Sal is saying, you're overarching, which you, you know, test that out by, you know, by I'm, I'm going to guess that you're not, you're not talking about feeling like you're a muscle pump in your low back, but you feel like it's not, it's kind of not good. Like it feels like your spine is shearing a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're overarching. Yeah. You're 100% yeah. overarching. You, you don't get that from movement in the spine, movement in the spine. That'll give you a bur- like, burning sensation yeah, in the pump like, in your low like back. Like the muscles are tired. Mm-hmm. And and the biomechanics of a stiff legged deadlift actually place more uh more load on the on the on the muscles of the spine that surround the spine right. than a rear uh, Romanian. What's happening with you, which is common with people who are strong and are trying to focus on the glutes, is what they do is they stick, they really arch the back. They overarch yeah. the back. So what you want to do is I don't want you to overarch the back. I want you to go go ahead and arch your back like you normally do, then bring it more to neutral and then brace the hell out of your core and then focus on mm-hmm. your hips and you won't feel it in your yeah. spine anymore. I think it's because like I was saying, I'm really trying to differentiate the two movements for myself because I wasn't yeah. doing Romanian deadlifts for so long. I was just doing straight leg deadlifts. And I feel like um, I had even clients wanting to do Romanian deadlifts. And then I felt like, okay, I need to start doing this myself and really understand. And all of a sudden I had to just drop the weight so much yeah. lower because it was hurting to like do that yeah. hover. And yeah, like, no, I, like I was saying, no, yeah. br- brace your core really hard when you do it. That'll mm-hmm. offset the arch uh, mm-hmm. in your low back. That'll, that'll help fix that. And then as far as the other deadlifts are concerned, because I see your question, you're talking about sumo versus conventional. Two, right. di- two different exercises is how I would, I would, I would, con- I know they're both called deadlifts, right. but, and, and, you know, you, yes, you could do one and not the other, but that doesn't mean that they're totally replace each other. Uh, mm-hmm. I would consider them just different exercises. They're both yeah. hip dominant, you know, obviously right. posterior chain conventional, you're going to get more back and sumo you'll get. They're all more different, hips. but I never program 
any pair of them in the same workout. No, right? too so, much, right? Good point. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so they they are very different, and there's different focuses uh, on it. But I would never do like a Romanian deadlift and then also a sumo deadlift in the same workout. It's like I would just and I personally like when I coach clients. I like to do a, you know, a block of training, meaning, you know, a few weeks focusing on one of those. Yeah. Like, so we're going to do, right. we're going to do RDLs the next four times when we, when we get to right. what, what I normally would do deadlifting. And then after we've done it RDLs for a while, it's like, okay, let's, let's transition into and teach sumos. And now I'm going to do sumos for a month of, you know, training your deadlifts. And so utilize all of them because I think they all have tremendous value. Um, and, yes. then, and then maybe the only time I would put more focus on one or the other, if there's very specific things that the person's working on, like what I love about a sumo deadlift, I think it's a great butt builder because you are, mm-hmm. you, you are in more of a seated position, like a squat, mm-hmm. you get more glute activation. And then because the knees are opened up, you get focus on the glute mead. Yeah. The I wanted butt. to ask about that because I feel like there's confusing information about if a sumo deadlift does mm-hmm. really work your glutes because some people Hell yes, some professionals is. out there are saying like it's working the adductors more than it's working your glutes and i feel i feel it in my glutes and i would think that but then some professionals are out there like saying no don't use this on glute day it's not actually working your glutes so i wanted your guys to, to me all that. that's irrelevant Okay. Uh, you know, in terms of the overall value of both of those specific exercises, sumo and conventional, we're trying to master the movement and the mechanics and get the body mm-hmm. to uh, produce as much force as possible. There's not a lot of uh, exercises that allow you to drive and control uh, that much force and, and to do that right. all at once. And so if you can focus primarily on just like proper form technique and mm-hmm. really bracing the body and getting everything as, as live and active as possible, all of that is going to happen as a byproduct. Yeah. Not, yeah. not only I that, but that- a lot of most, most people or most girls that I'm training that want to develop their butt can sumo deadlift more than they can conventional RDL right. or stiff legged. So mm-hmm. also the, and also squat. So it's one of the best ways to heavy load somebody in yes. it focused on the hip complex that they wouldn't be able to do. So they're not going to squat. They're probably not going to squat 225, but I could, I could get a lot of girls to be able to sumo deadlift 225. Exactly. And, and that the right. benefits of that to Justin's point, instead of like really focusing on a single muscle is, is incredible. So, mm-hmm. uh, use them all. Uh, they're all, they're all different. I would never pair yes. them together. Um, and mm-hmm. unless I had a client who had a very specific reason why they were doing one, like obviously if someone's competing, we want to get good at one, one technique, you know, and we're going to always mm-hmm. do sumo. We're always going to do conventional, whichever one they lean towards. But for the general population, just getting your clients strong, building muscle, shaping their butt, all the, I mean, I'm going to use mm-hmm. all the variations. Right. I think I'm like, have been really in the headspace of programming for muscle groups and through listening to your guys' podcast, I've learned the value in full body workouts, right? And yeah. programming mm-hmm. in different ways. So I'm trying to sort of transition to that space. Um, yes, even with myself. That's, but that's a good I point. That's a good point, more. Angelina. Because in a full body workout, uh, I'm not thinking what muscle group does deadlifts work. Yeah, you right. Know, it's <laughs> I start my workout with deadlifts because I'm going to work everything anyway, right? So, with right. The, but the body part specific workouts, it can get a little, it can get a little funny, and people are weird about where they would place a specific, very valuable exercise, and sometimes they avoid them completely just because of that. Do you have any of our programs right now? No, I don't. I am a fairly new listener. It's been about two months and I am definitely, I, oh, I just started a cut for myself personally and it's, it's hard. What do you definitely got? What do you guys hard. see? What do you, what would you say? Strong or anabolic is probably one of the best for considering we're talking about deadlifting. Which one has the most variations that we have or uh, both of them? I mean, power lift too would power be Power lift. Yeah. I yeah, mean, but we I, don't do variations in that though. That's, no, it's just really mm-hmm. hyper focused. It's just hyper focused. I, yeah. But I love training for hypertrophy and I love training my clients for hypertrophy. That's go, go aesthetic. Yeah. I, I would, aesthetic with maybe like the butt builder bundles. And that's yeah, what we have going on. We'll right send now. you maps aesthetic. You've been working out for a while, right, Angelina? You got yeah. some pretty, yes. pretty good experience. Yeah, let's go, Matt. Yeah. We're gonna send you maps aesthetic, follow the program, and then what you'll learn some some things from or you'll pick some things up from it that I think you can apply to. Can you clients. throw her, Doug, the, the the either the butt mod or the butt builder version of that so she has all of that? Since I'm assuming that's probably some of the questions are around that. And I think we have more variations of the deadlift with the, that bundle what big box gym did you leave leave by the way um crunch, oh, crunch ah. fitness. Well, and now what you're yeah. in a small studio now now i'm in a small uh private gym called rec shop training and i'm super excited what, what, about it what crunch were you in 
You're in, in California. Um, I'm in California. I was teaching in Chino and Diamond Bar. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was teaching for about two years and I just felt like I... I'm trying, I'm, I'm going to grad school. I'm graduating in June and I need to pay my way through grad school. I need to start making more money than commercial gyms can offer me. And I felt like I'm a good instructor. So I need to move to a gym mm. that's really going to value me. Well, long to be as honest. long as you can get clients, that's hard. That's the hard yes, part. About yes. The gyms, yeah. Sure. I'm just getting like a little waiting list right now. And one, oh. cause at private, it's private gyms. It's sort of different where you have to like pay right to teach there. And so I'm trying to gather a group of people. So I know that I can really like start my business there. I was teaching out of my garage because I have a home gym and I feel like now I want to transition to a more like professional space. Awesome. <laughs> well, good, well, good luck. Good for yeah. you. I hope you, I hope you crush it. And, um, if you have any questions, send us an email, but we'll give you a maps aesthetic and the, and the butt builder, uh, combo with that. Okay. Great. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for taking my question. And this is super cool you, and have a great day. You guys. You got it. You too. Right, thank you. you. I know it was just the very end of that conversation, but it's such a common um, misbelief, right? That you, leaving to go private, you're going to make so much money. I, I can count on one hand. You can make more money, yeah, but there's okay. one big I can block count on, in front I can of that. count on one hand. Okay, I've, I've trained, I was one of those hired, trained, developed, coached trainers most of my career. So hundreds have, have, have worked underneath me at one point, like over the course of you know 10 years. And I can count on one hand how many trainers left to go make more money. And even I Wait, would you even mean that actually difficult. succeeded. Yeah, is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, that made more than what they made working for. Yes, me. yes. Working in a in a big box gym where there's traffic. Yeah, per hour they all made more money. Per hour you can go raise your rate and you get to collect all of but it. But you go from training seven people in a day to train two. That's right. Yeah. You know, and it's really really tough to to leave and go do that it's just i think we especially a gym like crunch crunch 24 lifetime fitness it's a sea it's literally a sea of potential clients you i mean and this is what people don't realize yeah as a as a trainer walking into a very busy big box gym where you're looking at at any given moment 30 to 100 people who don't have a trainer like i could i used to do this with yeah, people all the time fish in a barrel oh i used to do this with my trainers all the time i'd walk the floor and i'd come back with three clients and you in a private studio, you don't have you have to go outside of the studio. You have to go out to the grocery store and to the Starbucks and you got to do more. And by the way, the ones that actually were able to go do that, like a Justin, were already crushing eighty to a hundred thousand dollars a like year completely as completely tapped out. Right? Yeah, I couldn't they, fit they, my exactly. schedule. They anymore. were already yeah. Yeah. maxing out, they were already getting paid top dollar inside the, and to me that's what the conversation I always had with these trainers was like, listen, I'm all for supporting you building your own business, but let me just give you a little bit of advice. First, max yourself out in a in a in a place like this where people are giving you leads. Like you don't you don't even realize how much how much value there is in a gym like a Crunch that's getting anywhere between a thousand to two thousand workouts every single day inside that commercial gym, and at all times there's twenty five to a hundred and something people on the floor, which are opportunities and leads for you. And then you go to a private gym where there's, you know, 10, 15 trainers working at everyone that's working out there are all with trainers. So there are no leads at that gym and you have to go find that. It's just, they don't, if you, don't if you're not, the, if you're not the top selling trainer in your big box gym and you, you don't have, uh, and you, and you fear walking up to people, yeah. you're screwed. Either be, you gotta be number one in that gym yeah. and not be afraid be obsessively of obsessively driven yeah. Uh, to, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more difficult, but like learning about your own business and, and how you're going to market yourself and how you're going to handle like all of the accounting and everything else. Uh, if you're ready for that, like it's a great transition Yes, um, and you definitely can make an awesome career out of it, but it's, it's definitely weeds a lot of people out. Well, and as far as the deadlift portion, which is really what you called for, uh, you know, this is a, another part of our space, which annoys me, like everybody wanting to, you know. Because she bright, she brings up how there's professionals in our space that say that well that that doesn't work this and that's more of this and it's more I get so annoyed by that stuff. So do I because it's it's it doesn't it it's not that important like you, what you guys kept. Uh, you know who's you know who's saying that it's all the biomechanic non coach yeah. non trainer specialists. Yeah. So they look at the biomechanics. all the nerds that don't go past ninety degrees. They're the same people that say the conventional deadlift isn't a back exercise or doesn't really work. Yeah, back. A sumo deadlift doesn't develop the glutes at all. Yeah. Dude, I'll tell you right now, that was one of the the best secret weapons I ever figured out as a as yeah. a coach and trainer was watching how much that did develop glutes was yeah. incorporating that exercise. So. 
yeah, stupid, stupid points that these these you know, influencers and professionals are trying to make just to get attention, you know, is to make that make that debate. Our next caller is Cassie from England. Hey, Cassie, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Nice to meet you all. Um, I've been listening to your show from quite early on, so I'm excited to meet you. Thank you. All right. Nice to meet you. Uh, so I'm just going to read my question so I don't get flustered here. So, <laughs> um, so you've helped me pass a lot of my body image issue struggles with food and dieting, training, all that. But now my main issue is that I'm stuck on trying to get my body exactly how I want it, really, specifically my arms. Um, I trained like a power lifter for many years as my brother was a competitive power lifter. So he trained me. Um, I do have a strong upper body and I, I don't feel like I have to train a lot on my upper body to get strong. Um, but I do feel like my arms are big. So um, I know if I lean out, I would probably get smaller and maybe show more of the muscle. But um, I... I sort of, sort of at the minute don't feel like I can wear anything really feminine because I feel like my arms are out of proportion and that they do build easily. So during the pandemic, I stepped away from the powerlifting and I set up at home, ran MAPS, Anabolic, and then went back in the gym, jumped to, um, jumped to Aesthetic, heard your recommendation about performance, so went back and did performance. And then now I'm currently running Aesthetic again. Um, but my question really is, if I want my arms to get smaller as I try to maybe cut, should I be lifting my biceps and triceps as much as like what's in aesthetic or should I maybe not be f focusing on my arms? Um, should I maybe cut the, the amount of sets or should I just be sticking to compound lifts only or do I actually need to focus on my arms more? Yeah, no, that's th these are good questions. Um, do you know like how lean you are or what body fat percentage you're at? So I went to the um, Arnold Classic in October and then I did like a in-body scanner thing and I think it was around 23%, but I know that they are very accurate. So I, I don't 100% know. Um, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, 23% uh, not bad at all. I was going to say uh, you know, one of the best ways to shrink anything is to get leaner. If you dropped a few percent body fat, you would get smaller overall. Uh, as far as your arms are concerned, yeah, you can you can totally avoid direct arm work. So in MAPS Aesthetic, when you're looking at the program, you can do all the exercises. And then when it gets to biceps and triceps, just, to, just don't do those exercises. They're going to get enough work from the compound lifts that you're going to maintain strength and stability. Because I never like to encourage people to purposely get weak or lose stability. That's not going to really happen too much because you're you're still doing you know pressing and pulling and that kind of stuff. I would just avoid the direct arm work, and then on your focus session days, you know, add exercises for areas of your body that you want to you know develop even further. And then, in simultaneously, getting leaner will give you probably more of the shape and size that you're looking for as well. And then what do you guys think about having her focus on, you know, because obviously there's going to be a, a, you know, a week's time, there's a bunch of different places where there's going to be arm work, especially when you include also focus sessions. So this is an example of where, uh, and this is why the assessment portion of training is so important when you first start a client and you see where we have any sort of imbalances or we have limited range of motion. So as a coach, I would now program, okay, wherever it says bicep or tricep, we're going to get down and do your combat stretch, or we're going to get down and we're going to do your 90-90 to, to program in good mobility work that you probably, because everybody has something that they probably need to work on uh, in, in regards to mobility. And so here's an example of where I've got a client who we don't want to grow or develop our arms anymore. We're fine where we're at, <clears throat> but I, I want to program something else. Instead of doing what I think most people do, which is they go, oh, okay, I'm going to do more glute stuff now, or I'm going to do more sh shoulder stuff now. And there's plenty of that already in the program. And you don't need to add anything like that. But this is there's there's tremendous benefit right here to focusing on like a mobility exercise that you probably could do more of. Yeah, I'm always trying to find ways to incorporate it. So it uh, is something that the clients will stick with. So if, if that's going to 
um, be the be the case in this instance, I think that would be valuable uh, to replace that with uh, you know certain mobility moves that you know um, you could improve upon in terms of uh, you know range of motion for different joints or just avoiding pain in general from the compound lifts. Yeah, and Cassie, you know, now I don't I don't uh, know you, but I'm going to make a generalization uh, in terms of body fat storage. Women. Uh, store more body fat in the arms than, than men do. Um, so when a guy will gain weight, he typically will gain it in, in, the, in his trunk, especially in, his, in the front part of his trunk, his abdomen area. Whereas women will gain it in the lower part of their body and in their upper body, they tend to gain it in their arms or in the triceps in particular. So if that's you, if you notice that when you gain body fat, you tend to gain body fat in your arms, then dropping a few, because now you're at 23%, so low 20s. As you start to get closer to like 19, 18%, those harder to lose areas are going to start to burn body fat. So, you know, it's a, I've said this before, the first place you gain is the last place that you lose it. You're at the point now where you're, you know, the, the, the low twenties, a great body fat percentage to be at. It's, it, you can be athletic. It's not super ripped. It's easy to maintain, but as you go lower and lower, especially once you get down to the high teens, 18, 19% body fat, then you'll see those the areas that you may be you know genetically predispositioned to gain. You'll start to see it come off there. So I would do a, a, a cut if if so long as your calories okay. I haven't asked you any diet questions. So so long as your metabolism is doing good and you've got good calories and you feel good, I would do a cut and then I would avoid direct arm work. And then the guys made a great suggestion. You could replace the arm work with mobility work. So you're still you're doing something instead of just doing nothing. And the mobility works out tremendous. Also, I mean, that, congratulations. I'm sure there's a lot of people on here that are jealous of your arm gains. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I think that's the issue. I have. I get embarrassed in the gym. <laughs> Cassie, <laughs> Cassie, do you have MAPS Prime by chance? <clears throat> I do have Prime. Okay. Um, yeah, I have Prime. So, yeah, here's a great opportunity for whenever. I'm sure you did Prime, and I'm sure there's some areas uh, that you might not have passed and failed. Uh, take some of the movements that are in there, um, and and that's where I would uh, insert them into your programming. Yeah, what part of England are you are you, are you from, by the way? Huddersfield in West Yorkshire. Okay, so it's like the north, north kind of. Yeah, good north deal. Way. Yeah, my wife's family's from England, and I forgot what part. Right. But I'll tell her. <laughs> She'll talk to somebody from that area. <laughs> um, I I do like training for strength as well. Um. And I like doing, I don't like doing biceps, but I like doing tricep dips. But then is that, that's obviously probably going to imbalance my arms, I imagine. Yeah, not, not, not a lot. I mean, you're still doing pulling stuff. You're still rowing and pull downs and stuff like that. You want to do extra tricep work? That's totally fine. Especially things like oh. dips. Yeah, dips you're, are great. You're that's range of motion. Yeah, so that's you're a valuable fine. exercise. You're, yeah, you're totally fine. Okay, cool. All right. Thank well, you very much. Cassie, uh, I, I know you said you already have Prime. Do you have Prime Pro? Because that's got some more advanced... Mobility movements. I, I don't have time for it. All right. No. We're going to send that over to you. All right. Oh, perfect. Thank you. We're going to mail it all the way over to England. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Cassie. Hey, thanks for Pigeon calling mail. in. Carry your pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 I'm glad, Sal, you you brought up the point about body fat reduction because here's something that's uh, it's just more common with women. I, I feel like I'm getting too big. Usually it's a body fat thing, you know? Yeah, no, she may have great arms. And if, and, and here, and here's the thing where I think that that's why I'm glad you brought that up is sometimes that's just it. They just store more body fat in that area. Yep. And then they're, they're they don't, they want to avoid it because they feel like it's already thick and I don't want to get any yes, bigger there. Yes. And if that's the case, then I actually wouldn't want my client to stop doing buys and tries. No. Like I would, this is what's hard about doing this yeah. over the but, phone. But you know, it's, but it's I okay. Is my it's right. Point. No, no, no. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. It's not like we're avoiding back work. Yeah. You know, no, like no. And yeah, if you're going to drop anything off, she's getting bicep work through all the other pulling movements. So it's not yeah. a big deal, but it, this is where it's hard on the podcast because I don't see her. I don't train her. We're not working together. If I was her coach, I would be able to, I'd go like, you're fine. Yeah. We just need to lean out. Plus, like, you have a relationship mm -hmm. with her. We yeah, know. And right. Like, eh, that's not muscle. I think you're okay. I think the muscle, once we get lean, you'll be happy. That's right. And now, when it, with women, here's the deal. Very rarely are they actually too big from a muscle perspective. If they are- That's my guess. If they are, it, it's rare, but if they are, here's the two body parts where it's 99.9% .9 of the time, the issue. Number one, calves. Women can and have had calves. That My wife is like, my, my wife's calves- or in, she's got bodybuilder calves. She doesn't work them, and she never wants to work them. Luckily, she has small ankles, so it looks real good. But if she trained her calves, they would blow up, so I would totally get that. The second one may be legs, and that's it. I have mm -hmm. yet to meet a woman ever 
it, it, that I've literally got arms that were too muscular before. Yeah, yeah. Traps, yeah. yeah, yeah, tra- yeah but that's because that any traps women don't oh, like. Yeah. They don't like any development of the that's traps. That's the thing. They don't want any definition. Yeah, yeah. but getting getting leaner is usually the usually the, 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 the thing answer. that you need to do. Yeah. yeah. Our next caller is Michael from Canada. What's up, Michael? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks so much for taking my call. Uh, so my question basically boils down to asking your advice on how realistic my fitness goals are and then what sort of program I would kind of look at to achieve those goals. Um, so I'm 45 years old. I've been a basketball player my whole life. Uh, all of my workouts in my teens, my 20s, my 30s were always based on sort of explosiveness. So all I really cared about was like my speed, agility, vertical leap, that kind of stuff. Uh, as you can imagine, over the last 10 to 15 years, my athleticism has decreased. And I wanted your advice on how to calculate the risk reward kind of balance or calculation um, when it comes to workouts designed for increasing that kind of athleticism. Um, so long term, like I'm still hoping to continue playing basketball for at least say another 10 years or so. And I, and I have like the work ethic and the tools to still be like one of the more athletic middle-aged guys out there. But I kind of wanted to know, is it worth it to still pursue that kind of athletic goal at my age? Or is it time to kind of check my ego and start focusing on maintenance, longevity, that kind of stuff? Yeah, well, this one this one hits me right. This, is so, this hits me in the feels so hard, bro. You have no idea. This, this, is, a, this is, is a coming. good question. I got your back on that. This is a conversation I have with Katrina a lot. I don't even tell the guys this stuff. Like I wrestle with this like every fucking day like i miss basketball like yeah no. we, we don't know you don't need to talk to us about it, <laughs> <laughs> we can see yeah, it. they don't care right so <laughs> but i literally like what you what you're what you're wrestling with is something that i'm i'm in the middle of still wrestling with right now and the reason why i'm not playing ball is and and hopefully this was not what is going to happen to you because you just you pointed out the thing that i know i i I'm not disciplined enough right now to train in the gym like a, a a person who is trying to protect their body with basketball. I'm still training to look a certain way and feel like that's kind of where my head is. Plus, you stop for a while, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Still no. going. Yeah. So uh, to me, that that's really the, the you could play basketball till you're 70. The, right. But if you as so long as you put the work in mm-hmm. to take care of the body so that you don't get hurt while you're playing on the court. And that, that is the main thing. Like if you were, if you were doing that reservation, that's right. If you were, and it, boy, does it make it when we get 40 plus it, it really, really matters when we were 20. And I know, you know, this, you probably didn't have to stretch. You didn't have to do a movie, you know, do anything, right. you get on the court and go play for three hours straight and be completely fine. Um, yeah. I've learned the hard way in my in my late 30s of you know rolling you know level three sprains in both ankles tearing an ACL MCL like I've had injury after injury and I know it's because I've built up a physique that's that's uh, more conducive to lifting heavy weight uh, right. than it is to playing on on the court so that's that answers that right there we'll get into the programming piece but you know so long as you put the work in the gym you yeah. can play ball as long as you want just bro. to add to that like generally everything has to be a lot more deliberate and intentional yeah now. and so it, it you could get away with a lot more obviously like with your youthful body um and so you know prep and priming and all those things that we talk about all the time like i'm stressing this so much I, i'm trying to get this uh mindset to uh be adopted by the the youth and and, and the younger you are and you start really kind of uh a incorporating these type of rituals, uh, the better, the, the, the longer you're going to have the abilities and they're going to last longer to where we avoid the pain and the stress and in areas that we don't want. So your whole thing is to make sure you have strength support and, and to have that kind of stability around your joints. So the mobility emphasis, I can't stress enough. Um, and on top of that, it's really about like maintaining strength. So it's less about like trying to, you know, crush PRs and trying to get, you know, super strong. And it's more about, uh, you know, movement in general and, and quality of movement and intentional movement. And so it's, it's a completely different type of pursuit. Yeah. Michael, something you said about, you know, should I check my ego? I want to be very clear. That's something that's smart and should be a priority for anybody in the gym is checking your ego because that's always what what tends to be the problem regardless of your age as far as your workouts are concerned you see what he's doing up there this is really interesting you'll know i'm gonna go to what he was saying then we could talk more specifically but so this is a this what i'm about to say is going to make a huge difference in your performance okay because i know you're talking about how you hurt 
or how you don't want to get hurt and that kind of stuff. But I'm going to talk right. about your performance. When you're young, my the, as a trainer, depending on if you're in season or off season, but generally speaking, I'm trying to push and improve performance. And doing that will make you perform better as an athlete. As you okay. get older, with lots of experience uh, playing basketball, you've reached certain peaks of performance uh, you know, over your lifetime. I'm going to get better performance out of you by not focusing on pushing your performance, but rather by focusing on, pr on protecting yeah. your joints and your mobility. So that's a different mentality. Whereas, you know, 15 years ago, you go to the gym, you're like, I need to get stronger. I want to get faster. Mm -hmm. I want to jump higher. Today, if you want to get faster, if you want to jump higher and get stronger, don't focus on getting faster, jumping higher, getting stronger. Focus on protecting your mobility and your joints, and that will get you the performance. So it's a different mentality when you go to the gym. That's it. So if you go to the gym, regardless of what you do, and you think to yourself, what can I do to protect my mobility? What can I? What are the muscle imbalances and movement issues I have? What are my mobility issues? How can I make my body feel better? That's going to give you better performance than going to try to get stronger and get faster and to jump let higher. Me, let me ask you a question. So if you're going to compare yourself to your 20-year-old self to where you're at now, um, you know, how often do you sit and what does your day-to-day -day schedule look like in terms of the difference of avail availability of movement and how much you would move throughout the day versus now? Uh, so if I had to compare, in my 20s, I was working more of a desk job. Today, I'm, I'm working from home a lot more. So that actually gives me a lot more chances to you know, break it up, go for a walk, uh, do a little bit of yoga in the middle of the day, that kind of stuff. So, so I'm actually doing a better job of taking care of those kinds of things now than I did 20 years ago. Well, that's great. I was expecting the opposite. I so. mean, I love it. You see what he's got up there, what he's doing. I, the only real tweak I might make is like you're, I, you're following like a, a random yoga YouTube. I would be yeah. more specific to to mobility moves that are going to uh, benefit you and and to Sal's point of protecting you on the court, which is like lateral stuff, rotational stuff, foot strength, decel are huge. deceleration, uh, foot ankle. Um, so that so instead of doing like a, a a generic yoga class, which there's nothing wrong with that, but because you have specific goals, uh, instead of you doing that, I would actually do. But do you have Maps Prime Pro? <laughs> I, I don't. Okay, see. so we're gonna send that. I'll have Doug send that to you, so you have that at your disposal. Thank um, you. And 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 then instead of doing a one hour generic YouTube uh, yoga class, I would do an hour of you know or half hour to hour of mobility work that is going to benefit you on the court. Yeah, and, and in terms of explosive stuff, like in risk versus reward, you can kind of um, figure out different ways to, to to reduce the risk, right? So with like kettlebell swings, for instance, you know, versus um, uh, doing power cleans with, with the Olympic, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, doing Olympic lifts versus, you know, uh, kettlebell type of explosive movements or controlled um, box jumps or, or things like that, where we can, um, you know, reduce a little bit of the uh, uh, risk and stress on the joints and control it a bit better. Like go through that and kind of, you know, adjust and make some tweaks there. The other thing too, that, and this is going to be a listening to your body. Um, Cause I, overall, I, I like kind of what you're doing already. Um, I might scale back on the strength training because you're doing five by fives and you're doing that two times a week, but then you're also got the skills training and you're playing ball like that might be a little much. So if I'm going to scale back anywhere, it's actually on like the heavy compound lifting that you might be doing right now because basketball is more of a priority. So I would be. I would. You can even just do it once a week. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm if I know that I'm I'm doing a lot this week, I might only strength train one time that week. Only time I would do two times is if I've just I feel fresh, I feel good, I already got the first one in earlier in the week, and you're like, you know, I totally feel great. I'm going to go do it again. But you got to be honest with yourself. Right. Uh, those are the main ones I see. I mean, I that's like it. I like I like what you're doing, dude. For yeah. the for the most part, for sure. Yeah, I hope that answers your question, Michael. Do you do you right. do you Here follow? You um, Paul Favorite's PGF performance. I, I do after hearing you guys mention it on a okay. previous episode. He's got he's got incredible content. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, actually, that's where that kind of came from. I, I saw some of his jumping stuff, and that's where I kind of got the question: like, would it be safe for someone my age to do his stuff? You know what's funny? You know what's funny about about that explosive stuff is that if you stop doing it, you actually start to lose the ability to do it. So, right. as long as you can do it and you can do it safely and controlled and you're not doing it to fatigue like a lot of people do. You've done all the right. prerequisites, you're, you're maintaining you're fine. it. 
You're good. Yeah, yeah. honestly, it's healthy <laughs> to incorporate the yeah. explosive movements, um, you know, as you age. So long as they're appropriate. So right. don't do what doesn't feel right or you feel unstable doing. You know, the maybe maybe we'll throw him also maps performance. I don't know where where you're getting your five by five training as far as your programming, but you could you I would follow like a maps performance style of uh, strength training. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with that program of ours, um, but I'll have Doug send that to you if you don't have it. Do you have Boom, it? Boom, two free programs, Michael. That, that'd be amazing. Thank you so much. No yeah. problem. Yeah, I'd use the use the foundational workout uh, workouts in there to to drive what, what you kind of do. I think that type of work will carry over into the court better than like a, a traditional- Agreed. Um, you know, squatting, deadlifting, bilateral Agreed. stuff. And that would be just once a week I would do that. Yeah, once or twice based off of how you're okay. feeling. Yeah. But I, I agree with Sal. You're, you're probably just fine with the amount of uh, stuff you're doing already. Yeah, and he's been time. working out for so long. I mean, yeah. it's, it's plenty. Great. Thank you so much, you guys. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you, right on. Thank you, right, man. dude. You know, it's interesting are the parallels, uh, and trust me, there's a connection here, between investing and exercise. Like when you're a young investor, the goal is to be aggressive, take risks, try to grow it. Then later when you've grown your wealth, it's all about protecting it and making sure it doesn't get blown and it gets taken by taxes or whatever. When you're training as a kid, you're like, push the performance, push the yeah. strength, push you're the speed. Stretching your capacity. When you get older, what'll make you perform better is protecting your body. So like you look at an athlete, like uh, who's one of the best, like Tom Brady, right? He's been yeah. playing forever. I guarantee you, if we looked at his training early in his career and compared it to now, he it's spends flipped. millions on recovery. It's flipped. I bet you most of it in the beginning was improving performance and some towards recovery. And now I bet you it's none flipped. of it. None of it today is on performance. It's all about protecting it, and recovery. It's a hundred percent. I mean, they went over that. And there's a really great documentary on ESPN Plus on him that it took him and they followed his trainer and how they trained. It's, it's like all that, right? It is all recovery. Yeah, it's yeah, what I would assume. You're not going to make that guy throw further or harder. No, what'll make him career. throw further and harder is keeping himself healthy now. Yeah. Not pushing the performance. And this, I mean, this one really hits me in the feels. It is 100% what I've been wrestling with for quite some time now. And, and Katrina and I talk it out all the time. And the truth is, uh, I'm not disciplined right now to do the work I know I need to do to protect myself inside the yeah. court. And I know better. And so that is the, the only reason why I'm not playing ball. You want to do the basketball part. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah exactly. I just want to play ball. I really want to be able to go down the court once, maybe three times yeah. a week at most, and just play, get in a pickup game. Mm -hmm. But I know it's a, a recipe for disaster for me because I have not been training that way. Yeah. And so my- Basketball is so explosive. It is. And, it, and it's so, man, it, it, and it's it's the areas that you, I, lateral and rotational stuff are areas yes. that- <laughs> Yeah, collect. Everything I stress like times a thousand. Yes. You know, you, you put yourself in that environment. Especially yeah. if you're, you're a big guy. It's yeah, like well, yeah, small dude. That's, you know I mean? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's why I, I got hurt so many times towards the end of I me. Mean, you're my, so strong in one direction. Yeah. yeah. You're you 220 really pounds and you twist real fast and you don't have that stability. Like, pop. You know, but I mean, goes it, so, you know, for all the, for all the, you know, older guys or guys that are above 30 that have contemplated this same exact situation, I mean, that that's my, I make this deal with myself. The only way I'm going to go play ball is if I put the work in first mm -hmm. of protecting myself. And if I, if I'm not willing to put the work in to protect myself, then I, I haven't earned the yeah. right to go play ball. That's the, the way I look at it. And the biggest, uh, not, for lack of a better term, mistake or challenge is that you stopped for a while. Yeah. And then now to get it back. Mm -hmm. What do you think it would take you a year of tr of, of really good like work? No, I think work, I, no, I think I could do it in in three to three on the short end uh, months. I think uh, probably on the long end six. I don't think I would. And then you feel one. like you'd be ready to get back. Yeah, on the floor, yeah, right? yeah. No, you could. I mean, it, just you know that with building muscle and muscle memory, sure, like sure. it wouldn't take that long sure. if I was dedicated to really yeah. working towards it. But it'd be have to be dedicated. It couldn't be like once a week I do a little bit. No, of, it'd be yeah. consistent. Yeah, focus. it would be building yeah. the program around trying to be a good basketball player or protect yeah. myself on the core and that not thinking about yeah. oh my, my I was thinking squad. more like I was thinking more of myself but that'd be more like, <laughs> like three years it could be like a, I never played hey, you're squatting low now bro you gotta take things <laughs> in strides you know <laughs> our next caller is Gary from Illinois Gary how you doing how can we help you hey guys uh I gotta tell you I've been devouring your videos thank it's, you uh incredible found it found your videos about a month ago and uh been devouring them. I'm a, I'm a writer, so I have them on all day long in the background. Uh, it's really great, great content. Really love it. Um, I'm going to be 71 in June, and uh, I want to maintain uh, strength. I want to be maintain and improve flexibility. Um, uh, I play with the kids. My kids range from uh, 
uh, you know, 39 to 45, my grandkids are six to 16 mm. and uh, they take no quarter upon me. And it would be very disappointing uh, to myself and them if I ever uh, and can't do the things that I want to continue to do. That's cool. So I was uh, mainly started looking at your programming. I went ahead and bought the uh, anabolic because um, I didn't want to come to this um, this uh, your program empty handed, and so I'm open for ideas yeah. and what you think I should be doing to you know maintain and improve where I am now. Oh, Gary. Well, first off, uh, I appreciate you listening to the show. Um, you're in my favorite demographic of people to train. Anybody over the age of sixty, I used to learn so much uh, from from training people in that age group, and also the most consistent people I've ever trained. Uh, and I think it just comes from experience. So. Thanks for calling in and listening. What does your workout look like now? Because I need to know what your current fitness level is. I need to know what you're doing now so I can make a better, uh, a proper recommendation. So I'm, right now I've been doing, off and on, I've done uh, strong lifts, lifts five by five. Okay. okay. And how long have you been base. doing that for? That consistent Off and on over as long as it's been out. Like, I don't know, 10 years. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, did oh, you okay. start working out about 10 years ago? No, no. Over the years, I mean, <laughs> when you get to my age, you've done everything, right? You've done, <laughs> hey, we should we should run, right, Zumba. all the time. That's the way to do it. We should eat this way. We should eat that way. You should lift weights. Don't lift weights. Um, um, so over the years, uh, uh, I've I've lifted. I've, I've done some CrossFit um, at one point. Um, I've done. I did Orange Theory at one point. Um, I know my oldest son does burn, and his wife, who's a physical therapist, loves it because it gives her a lot of clients. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great business model. That's so true. Everybody's getting hurt. Oh, That's, That's exactly. So, it's so, so true. great. You know, okay, so Gary, you know what I like for you um, is actually Maps performance. I do too. Although yeah. anabolic's ah. not a bad place to start. Anabolic's I mean, not bad, but he's got so much experience. Yeah, you got a strong five lifts. by five base exactly. Yeah. So so strong lifts is great. It's a great basic strength building routine. Routine, uh, maps anabolic. Obviously, I think that's a great routine as well. They're both very, um, you know, sagittal plane focused. They're both very focused on in in specific types of movements, which means you're going to over time you're going to start to create some imbalances, uh, like laterally, rotationally, for example. And you're talking right. about keeping up with the kids and doing yeah. all these activities and skills. And so it's a great program to maintain a lot of these abilities. Yeah. Well, well MAPS performance would be ideal. And then the mobility sessions would be so good for you. The only change I would make in MAPS performance is I would not have you do the explosive phase unless mm -hmm. it's appropriate for you and you can do those things very comfortably and safely. Otherwise, you would eliminate that one phase. Right. It's like and, phase three. It's, and just follow MAPS performance as it's laid out with the mobility sessions. That would be so perfect for you, especially the mobility work. I think you would enjoy uh, quite a bit. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think you could you could probably live in MAPS performance. Oh, yeah. We cycle in there uh, at different phases, so you wouldn't really need to switch out of that too much. I mean, you could play with little bits of modification every time you go through it, but I think you could live in that. You're such a great call to follow up our previous call. We just had a guy on there that was 40-something who's played basketball his whole life, and he wants to be able to continue into his 70s playing basketball and wanting to know what our advice was and what his training should look like. So definitely when you get a chance to go back and listen to this uh, when it gets posted on YouTube or whatever, make sure you listen to that portion where we talk to him about right. some of the things, uh, just protecting his joints and, and thinking about his training and what it should look like to be able to still be in your 50s, 60s, and into your 70s playing basketball. Uh, very similar advice as you. You obviously may not care as much about the sport as much as you do care about running. Well, we, it, we do actually. Oh. Basketball is the uh, family sport. Oh, Boom. God, good for you. So there that, you go. So the advice that we give him very, very similar. Uh, you know, maps performance is be the kind of the strength training, and then a lot of focus on uh, mobility work, which is in maps performance. You know, literally with basketball, we were talking about this. Uh, you know, lateral movements and rotational stuff is typically the first thing that people you see go on people because we just don't do that in our normal day to day. And then you go mm -hmm. in the basketball court or playing yeah. pickup and you ask your body to do that explosively. And that's where you see injury normally happen. So if you're yeah. doing the right mobility work uh, in the gym to protect yourself when you do do those pickup games with the family, you're going to be all right. And uh, MAPS, yeah. MAPS Performance has a lot now, of that. Now, Gary, th th this piece of advice, and I've said this to everybody, uh, and I've said it on the podcast many times, but it is going to serve you really well. Regardless of the workout you do, 
Don't go to the gym and think to yourself, I'm going to work out. Think to yourself, I'm going to perfect my technique and skill with the exercises. It's a, it's a totally different mentality. So it's like you go to the gym to do squats. Well, I'm here to hammer myself. I want to feel my quads. I want to feel my glutes. I want to sore. get sore versus let's see how perfect I can make my squat. Let's see how good I can make my stability. Can I increase my range of motion with, 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 while maintaining good control, stability, and form and technique? That well, is with gonna- the little age comes some maturity. Yeah, so, <laughs> definitely. So, so, so I'm not chasing a weight to good. be. I'm not chasing a good. weight to lift. Uh, I'm just chasing the performance. I've got all the the equipment. Everything I have is home. I don't even leave the house to go to the gym. Oh, I have it here. That's great. Yeah, awesome. good for you. Yeah, no, that's it. I mean, mass performance with the mentality that I said. You're you're golden. You'll feel great, and you'll have energy and strength to play basketball and feel good about it. I'd also love to hear a follow up from you after you you go through that program for a while. So if you could reach back out to us and keep in touch, um, absolutely, would love to hear uh, how Maps Performance is benefiting you. I just think that you are a, a perfect client for that. Well, you know, the other thing too is that most of the people, most of the guys my age, are doing nothing. You know, they're golfing because oh, yeah. they're all retired. I'm not. Uh, they're all golfing. They're um, uh, if they do anything, it's walking, and they're they're just starting to come around to saying, asking me what I'm doing. Yeah, because there's obviously a difference, right? right? Uh, no, you. So you know, um, so so I, I, I'm trying. I'm doing this for myself, but I'm also hoping to, you know, inspire and encourage you know others and my you know, of my peers to you know follow along and 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 do the same thing. No, that's excellent. Amazing. You know, one Love of the it. one of the the most striking things about fitness uh, that I just blew me away as I would witness this is the difference between you and your peers. Boy does it get massive every decade. It yeah. grows and grows and grows. I feel I mean, like right at 40 that it really starts to Oh my hard. god, it's like when you're 20, you're you know, you work out, you're, your friends are 20, they don't work out. It's not a big difference, but when you're 40, 50, 60, 70, yeah. 80, you know, you're 71 years old, I I wouldn't be surprised if you had some friends that had mobility issues that had issues where they just couldn't do things that they could do maybe just yeah. 10 years ago. It compounds. I'm yeah. seeing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Add another 10 years to that, and, and there's going to be people who are going to require uh, help and assistance. Um, and you will be fit. You'll be able to take care of yourself, no problem. So it's just. Well, that's what we're seeing now. You know, my uh, most of us have all lost our parents. Uh, my mother just died mm-hmm. recently at 91. My mother in law is 98. But, you know, they all ended up in wheelchairs. You know, everybody's ending up in a wheelchair on, on their way out the, you know, out the door, so to speak. And uh, definitely do not want uh, to be in that position. Yeah. Well, you're on the right track, yeah, Gary. So we'll, we'll yeah. send you mass keep, performance. Keep doing it. Yep. And you'll be all set. Thanks St- for calling. Thanks, in. guys. I'll, I'll set the anabolic aside for now. Yep. Or, or give it to one of my kids. You got it. I bought it. There you go. <laughs> That's, That's it. it. Yep. S- stay in touch, Gary. Love to hear how it goes for you. Thank Thanks. You. I will. All Thanks. Right. You. Thanks, you guys. Well. Yeah, always my favorite group. The the change. It's always cool to hear. The, well, the change you see, like you know, you get someone to lose thirty pounds, you get them to, you get the average person to get more strong and fit, and it changes their life. It's great. I love it. I love it. But you take someone who's seventy, and you have them do some strength training, and they go from I couldn't go up to the stairs to now I can go up the stairs by myself. Like Bro, that's life changing totally in a different way. Bro, yes. can, you can you can can you hear the life in him? Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, he Energetic sounds like he's thirty years younger. Vibrant. Just, yeah. yeah, you know, doesn't yeah, hasn't stopped working. Still likes to work. Wants to be able to play basketball with his grandkids. Like such a. Yeah. I'll I'll never forget when I had a, my eighty four year old client come in and excited wasn't even her session excited to tell me that she was able to close the trunk of her SUV by herself. Yeah. Like the things you take for granted. Well, All because we started strength training. You don't you know? have to suffer through uh, the aging process. No. I mean, I think that's, I love to hear, you know, people are getting ahead of that and, and yeah. really sticking with, uh, you know, the training part yeah. of it because yeah. it, it, it just benefits the quality of your life going forward. Yeah, but you did call it and like, tell me, now that we're 40, we're all in our early 40s. Yeah. Oh, massive, massive. Oh, uh, drop bro, off. it is. We, I'm like my buddies, like, uh, like what happened to you? Like, if I don't see him for five years and I'll see him like, oh, you got a big yeah. pot belly and you're not moving well at all. Yep. Yep. You're only 40, dude. That's not good. So look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. 